vacancies on the board of people that have left. One vacancy is to fill one year remaining on one uh, trustee and the other one is to fill the two year vacancy. So with that, we're going to uh, start with the candidates. They will have three minutes to explain a little about their background. And from that point on, then we'll start asking the questions. You will have three minutes to answer. The questions that we're going to look at that have been turned in if your question wasn't asked, some of it might have been that it wasn't pertinent to what's going on today. There'd be no personal attacks. And if, in the audience, if you'd uh, refrain from clapping or making any kind of reaction until it's all over, we'd appreciate that. So we'll start from the left and work our way down. On the order of questioning, when we first start, we'll start left, right, all the way down. The second question, we go to the second one. Everyone will have a chance to go first. At the end, each one will have a, a three-minute period to surmise everything that has gone on, and then we'll bring it back over to the board. Any questions? <coughs> Would you like to begin? Introduce yourself, and then you have three minutes. Okay, I don't think I'll need three minutes. <laughs> My name is Denise Beauchamp. Um, I've been in the park for four years. Um, I bought in July of 2016. I live on Ohio Avenue on the corner of Canada and Ohio. Um, I'm interested in what is happening in the park and I would like to be a part of it and um, I have time. So. For 19 years, my husband and I owned and operated a plumbing and heating company. Um, I set up and managed all of the computers and the bookkeeping of that, and we also had a rental company, and I managed all of that. Um, I guess I'm retired now and have plenty of time, so yeah. that's it. <laughs> if you um, have a lot to say, we'll let you know when there's one minute left on the on the clock. There, right? The, right. One other thing is I have served on a township board for over 12 years as the township treasurer. That was an elected position, and that was back in Michigan. Thank you. My name is Bruce Smith. I have uh, previously been on the board a total of four years and a couple different times. I, uh, I was a harbor master for our, our boat operations. I uh, 
I believe, uh, uh, and I, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I've been, the time recently that I've been on, I've been uh, the South Park resident. Do you have something? Okay. I've had the South Park of the Park to um, solve the problems, make sure that you progress, make sure we're doing things legally. I try to get with people on a positive attitude. Most people don't want to break a rule. They just maybe don't understand it or need a little help. I don't believe in uh, chewing people out. I like to keep everything positive. If we're, we're all a little older, we don't need those, those kind of attitudes. Um, I am here year round, so I can cover both in the, in the summer and the winter anytime. If I, uh, anyone has any questions, I'm sure they'll ask them. Thank you. Hi, my name is Karen Murphy. I live at 6502 Washington Street, and I've been in the, the park now for about five years. My resume includes, I was a manager and administrator with the City of Columbus Public Safety for over 30 years. I retired from the City of Columbus. I am well versed in fiscal, human resources. I'm a good project manager. I, can, I relate well with people. Um, I don't, um, I'm, I'm bored. <laughs> I'm very tired and I am not one to sit around. I really, I need to work regardless of what you, if you want me or you don't want me, that's fine. You can get me for something else. But um, I do have a lot of um, experience with the federal government, the FMLA, ADA, um, FLSA, HIPAA rules. Uh, as far as budgets go, I went, I did fiscal um, every quarterly, and we did a projected budget for the city of Columbus for uh, millions and millions of dollars to make sure that um, I was with the police, fire, communications, the license section, and the weights of measures. I managed all of that to get it to come down to the projected budget and it kept costs, effectively costs. Um, so I'm excited about, I hope you consider me. I won't let you down. I think I'm a kind of good proof people person. So I would appreciate your consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Um, my name is uh, J.D. Good. My friends call me John. I've been in the park about three years, but I've been in Florida since 1960. Uh, my parents uh, are Scottish immigrants. My mother's from Dundee, and my father's from Glasgow. And he flew in the RAF back in World War II, and after the war was over, immigrated. And uh, when I was three, we moved to Clearwater when he became the advertising director of the St. Petersburg Times. Um, I went to elementary school here in Clearwater, and then uh, during my junior high school years, my parents sent me to Scotland to a boarding school that was outdoors and disciplinary, and then I came back and finished my education at Clearwater High School where I graduated in 1975. I went to the University, or excuse me, the St. Petersburg Junior, Junior College, which is now St. Petersburg College and majored in chemistry and then I transferred to the University of South Florida and uh, continued my major in chemistry but uh, at some point in time shortly thereafter I became married and moved uh, out to Oregon to Portland where my wife was from where we had uh, two children and I finished my degree. My, my two children are now both physicians in Lexington, Kentucky. Um, I went back to school and earned my Juris Doctorate and graduated in 1991 and started my own practice in Toledo in 1992 and then a few years later moved down to Cincinnati and uh, started another practice and had a, uh, three other attorneys working for me and a staff. Uh, I'm the former uh, uh, chairman, president of the Florida Bar Association, which was not to be confused with a, the unincorporated association called the Florida Bar which uh, acts as prosecutors against lawyers. I've never applied for my license here in Florida. In 2000, I came down to semi-retire. My parents, uh, my dad in particular, was in the advertising business and had a page that ran every week, a business page. One minute. Had a business page in the Brave Herald for 47 years. And um, so 
I like to think that uh, I have a really deep connection to this community. I'm a year-round resident. One of the reasons I'm here is that uh, half of the meetings were uh, unable to be conducted last year because so many of the Board of Trustees are snowbirds. And when they're not here, apparently they need a quorum of people present in order to conduct business. So uh, if you've read about my lawsuit and my depositions, you probably don't know more about that. I'll look forward to answering any questions. But I wouldn't be here and I wouldn't have filed that lawsuit except for this guy right here. So, um, so yeah, thanks. Hmm. We're going to take a couple of minutes to go over the questions that have been handed in, and then we'll get on. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, what? can we take about 10 minutes break to take over the questions? Any objections? Can you have 10 minutes break? Thank you. So, um, have um, owned and operated um, an Anytime Fitness, four of them. I have. Um, this was with my husband, and we've had 60-some rental properties that I have managed. I guess my uh, strong point is computers. I'm very good with computers. I also um, am not, not controversial. I, I like to get along with people, and um, I guess I just want to find out how everything works here and just be a good board member. What was the question again? The question is, what skills and expertise will you bring to the board, and what do you hope to accomplish well, okay. during your term? Uh, I was, uh, like I said, I was on the board for four years, uh, primarily with the south side of the park. Uh, I try to keep a positive attitude in dealing with people. I, I'm really big on that. I, uh, People don't want to break the rules or anything. So a lot of times they just don't understand it. Uh, I am a year-round year resident. I was a reliability engineer for General Motors in Oklahoma City. I was a supervisor for a little giant pump company prior to that. I was with um, Murphy Industries in Houston, Texas. And uh, uh, all those jobs, I, uh, I did a lot of traveling between uh, facilities. Uh, I was a firm believer, if you've got a problem, go out on the line and find out what the uh, hourly person knows about it, because usually a little more than the engineers know. Um, I like to solve problems without issues, without lawsuits. That's all I've got. Thank you. My skills are, again, um, I was a manager. I'm really good with conflict resolutions. I, um, I know a budget. I can handle a budget. I can, I'm good with human resources. I would love to bring peace and harmony wherever I am. Um, I'd love to learn how the park works and help, help maintain the goals of the park. Um, I don't know what else to say because I'm um, I'm a good manager, I'm a good organizer, um, and I'm kind of embarrassed to shut my, you know, put my own horn, but I can help, I can do, I can do well. I would be very helpful to you. Thank you. Um, my background, I, basically at the end of the day, I've been in sales, I've been in accounting for a $20 million company, I was a territory manager locally for a $25 billion company <coughs> uh, called uh, Semex, headquartered out of Monterey, Mexico. Uh, I worked uh, with, in the, uh, I'm a litigator, I've done a lot of litigation, and I've also been a corporate attorney, had a general practice for almost, what, 27 years now. But I'm also a lot of other things too. I hate to be pigeonholed as an attorney. You know, I had my pilot's license for 40 years. I've done all sorts of different things and traveled all around. And uh, I have a general background in pretty much everything, anything and everything. I worked with my father, and he took local businesses and then would make uh, uh, business stories about them. It was an advertising format, which was published every week, and not just the uh, 
Bradenton Herald, but the Lakeland Ledger, the Sarasota Herald, Tribune, the Tampa Tribune when they were still around. And uh, I uh, want to be on the board because I've been to like one of these meetings a year and a half ago, and I had a, a moment to discuss with Mr. Trotter, uh, you know, the my concerns, if you will, about the way the board is conducted. My parents had moved to a place called the Gardens, which is a rental mobile home community out in the uh, parish that uh, uh, was bought for two and a half million dollars on the courthouse steps when the guy built an Olympic-sized swimming pool. It wasn't filled up, but it had space for 650 homes. When he put his 650th home in there, he doubled the rent for everybody, and I got involved. My mother said, you know, you've got to help some of these people on fixed budgets to rent there for some of these lots or eight hundred dollars. One minute left. $800 plus a month. Long story short, I got involved and um, I know how to run a trustees and the board of directors meeting. And I think that a lot of those people that were on the board at the gardens, there's a lot of ego tripping that goes on. <clears throat> when anybody has a little bit of power, goes to their head and they act inappropriately. <clears throat> And while these have policy and procedures going on, they need to take a good hard look at it because uh, a trustee isn't supposed to be in charge of the entertainment, in charge of this, in charge of that. They make big decisions. The people, the majority, the homeowners and the residents, they put together a democratic vote and they make those decisions and the board of trustees carry that through for them. And uh, I just see too much diversion, if you will, of their uh, talents and their efforts, which should be concentrated more on making just Hi. objective decisions. Thank you. Okay. Would you think that, uh, what would make you think uh, the board members would be interesting in having you serve on the board? Well, what on the board? How would I present trustees feel about having to serve on the board? These are questions. How do trustees feel about serving on the board? You know, you serving on the board. Um, I think most of them are in favor of it. I, uh, I don't know why they would be against it. Okay. It's kind of like, you know, like it's a question that was asked. So. Yeah. Denise, same question. The other way, no. Other way. I'm Karen. Oh, Karen, Karen. Sorry, I just coming down here. I got you on the wrong one here. <laughs> How do you feel with uh, being accepted by the current trustees on the board? How would I feel about being accepted? accepting you working with them? Oh, I love it. I think it'd be great to work with them. I'm sure they have goals and procedures and things like that in place. And my, um, with my abilities and helpful at organization, I can assist them. I don't know uh, exactly what a specific job would be, but I do get along well with people. And if I'm wrong, I'll apologize. I'm a, you know, I don't know where I get I'm like, kind of like this all the time. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I, I'll, I'll let you know that the trustees know me better than probably uh, you know anybody else in this room uh, because, uh, as you read in my letter, I ended up taking their depositions and we had an opportunity to get to know one another. At least I got an opportunity to know them. And uh, if you read my letter, uh, you know I attempted to contact them, ask them a very civil, important question that concerned uh, a lawsuit. Uh, not that they were involved in, but maybe they had some uh, input that they could give <coughs> that would calm things down. Long story short, not a single one of them responded to my request for an answer. And uh, I think they, some of their excuses were, oh, we were told not to respond to you by the stupid attorney, Mark Barnaby, that is over here. I'm telling you, he's an idiot. And uh, that, that firm needs to go. But uh, long story short, not a single one of them returned my, uh, and, and, and so I said, hey, listen, I have to in include you and name you as defendants because, you know, you're being negligent. 
And, and, and basically, at the end of the car, they spent $5,000 of this trailer state's money to defend something that they weren't even already brought into and uh, could have been uh, uh, solved with the simple response to my question. And uh, anyway, they know me very well. I don't have anything against any of them personally. I just think that uh, you know they could use some assistance in helping make their job work uh, simple, more effective, and uh, and reflect the needs and wishes of the community. Thank you. Thank you. Did you read the question? <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel? Working with the board, if they would be interested in having you on the board. Um, I'm not sure. I don't know many of the board members, but um, I'm a positive person. I like to get along with people. At this point in my life, there's no sense in spending a lot of time arguing or being controversial. Um, I also have expertise with bookkeeping, computers, um, I guess um, I, I would enjoy getting to know them and finding out how the board operates. I guess I've always, uh, when I was on the township board, I like to look at the laws and see how things worked and I really, I, I, I kind of enjoy looking at all the public acts and figuring out in depth and um, we had a fire department and we ended up, um, the, the two boards operated the fire department and they were running on their own and making their own rules and everything. And so um, the two boards, by reading all of the public acts and what um, constitutes a fire department, if you have one, the boards are the ones who set up the rules for them. Well, I wasn't very popular at that time with the fire department, but it, it all worked out. We set up the rules and helped them with their budgets and in the end they were happy. Um, but I guess I do have some points to offer. So Thank you. Karen, we'll start with you now. How do you feel about marina fees and non-residents having slips over residents? Uh, slip fees, I understand the cost to tail to run the marina. I, there, there has to be. The people that are outside that do not belong here, I mean, don't live here, um, I I think that the people at Taylor State should have the first option if they want to get the slips, and I would ch probably charge more for anybody that's outside because the, the cost incurred shouldn't be absorbed by Taylor State. Thank you. I uh, feel uh, that the uh, should be first come, first served, but for the residents, obviously. If uh, but I do believe that in order to obtain revenue fees, obviously to make them available to uh, other people within the area that want to mostly because they're not all used. And I saw the boat race, and they charge quite a bit for people that are non-residents, and. Uh, but regarding raising the rates for members, for either, uh, or excuse me, for residents, either on the storage or the marina, marina, I strongly disagree with that because it's, you know, they're charging a fair, a fair enough price right now, I think. And uh, if more revenue needs to be generated in order to uh, help the community, there are other ways to go about that. I don't think that that's uh, necessarily the, the best way to generate that revenue. There are several different options and ideas that can be explored. Could you read the question? <coughs> How do you feel about the marina fees and non-residents having slips over the residents? First of all, I don't think I understand the fee schedule right now. Um, and I'd also um, want to know where our revenues are coming from or how much in revenue we take in and how much we spend and then look at the whole thing, the whole picture, not just the fees for the... Um, I wouldn't be either in favor of raising them or not until I understood the process behind them. Second. 
I think you've already answered this one, John. Uh, the third question is, <clears throat> are you a full-time resident? This is for everyone. John, you can start. Yes, as a matter of fact, I've been a full-time resident in Bradenton since I uh, moved back from Cincinnati and sort of semi-retired back in 2000. So I've been here for, what, in the area for 19 years. I've been a full-time resident in Trailer Estates. I live on Marlin Lane, just across the street, and uh, I'm an owner and plan on staying here for, uh, well, until the clock runs out probably, so there you go. I'm vested in the interest of the community. Thank you. Uh, um, the question. The question is, are you a full-time? Oh, okay. Uh, um, no, I'm not full-time. Um, however, I plan to be eventually. Uh, this year, I came in September, so I will be here for seven months this year, um, just to see what it was like weather-wise. And I enjoyed it. It was fine. I got a chance to clean up my yard. I, I'm like planting flowers and keeping my yard up. So, um, anyway, that's I'm not a full time resident. I am a full time resident. Resident. I've been here. I think it was 2004. Thank you. Um, Karen, that's the answer. I am a work in progress. Um, I stay longer and longer each year, and my plan is to move in permanently. But I, um, we stay later and later, but we've got a house we have to sell up there. But I'll leave, <laughs> if you need someone for a form or something, and you know that the meeting um, is going to happen, Allegiance flies directly in here, so I can come and, and leave or whatever, but I can be here at any time. No problem. Thank you. Are you ready to be upright, truthful, and honest to the residents of Trailer Estates on the board? What was the first? I didn't hear the first word. Are you ready to be upright, truthful, and honest to the yes. residents? Yes, I, that's what I am. I think I gave a good answer. That's what I am. I swear. <laughs> I swear. Well, I have more to say. I've got three minutes, right? You do. I'm a person of integrity with a good attitude and specific goals. I have a high energy level, I'm enthusiastic, and I take pride in my appearance and what I do. I have a sense of humor, lots of faith, wisdom, and the vision, the empathy, and the courage to use my talents effectively. I have character, and I'm knowledgeable. My convictions are strong, and I have a healthy self-image, a passion for what's right, and a solid hope for the future. I am an honest, sincere, hard-working person. I'm tough, but I'm fair and sensitive. I'm disciplined, I'm motivated, and I'm focused. I'm a good listener, and I'm patient, but I take decisive action. I'm bold, authoritative and confident, yet humble. I'm an encourager, a good finder, an excellent communicator, and I'm developing winning habits. I'm caring, I'm selfish and committed, I'm a student, a teacher, and a self-starter. I'm obedient, I'm loyal, I'm responsible, I'm dependable, I'm prompt, and I have a servant's heart, yet I'm ambitious and a team player. I'm personable, I'm optimistic, and I'm organized. I'm consistent, I'm considerate, and I'm resourceful. I'm intelligent, competent, persistent, and creative. I'm health conscious, balanced, and sober, and I'm flexible, punctual, and thrifty. I believe I'm an honorable person who is truly grateful for the opportunity to have to serve this community. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is, start with Bruce. Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry about that. What are some of the things that we can increase that we could do to increase the revenues in the park? Huh. Well, that's a good question. You're always fighting the increased revenue versus what are 
owners can afford. We have people in the park that are retired and they came in with the idea it would be so much money a month, so much money a year. Possibly more outside events to that to invite the outsider people away from the park. Um, keep working on, uh, on cost daily or monthly yearly cost to not we don't waste money where uh, I don't think we intentionally waste money but like any business we've always got to be looking. Um, I think that's pretty well it. I think we're we're set with what we take in. Of course we got to set up with the uh, the increase in uh, expenditures. Maybe we need to look at some of those a little closer, but uh, there is no easy answer for that. I would, I would suggest maybe we have a a group, a committee, ongoing all the time to keep working on that issue. That's about all I would say. About it. Thank you. Increasing revenue. Um, I know that they're, they do do fundraisers and, and things like that, but my first choice of work to do would be to review the budget and see where everything is spent to make sure that you know, everything's appropriate to, or if there's something that you can cut back on and raise something out, I mean, apply it to something else because I know that uh, there are some issues that need addressed with the fire and, and places like that, but I think the fundraisers and the shows that have been put on, they're great. I think we could get more people in if we just advertise that a little bit. Um, as far as actual pinpointing how to do it, I really don't think a tax base would work um, because it would put a hardship on people. So I would like to review the budget first before I make any recommendations. Sorry. Uh, first of all, this is Trailer Estates Park and Recreation. It's basically a division of the Park and Recreation Division of Manatee County or Department of Manatee County. The point is, I don't remember or even understand why we have to consider the park to be a business where it has to be income producing, you know, to any major extent. Yeah, nobody wants to raise their taxes or, or, or park fees, but the point is, we're not supposed to be in business selling stuff. I mean, that's great that it's able to uh, acquire additional revenue. The point is, is if uh, the owners, uh, uh, the homeowners here, want a nice community, you know, sometimes you got to chip in. And uh, one of the things that's disappointed me uh, in, in the community, like I said, this one my parents lived in, it was a rental, they had the most pristine grounds. And, uh, you know, What's happened here is several people in the community, and maybe some of you, own 10 homes, and nine of those are rentals. And guess what? People that are renters don't have private ownership. And there's a lot of lawns that uh, aren't getting mowed, and for those of you that aren't here in the summer, that's a real issue. There's just a lot of maintenance that needs to be done. I've applied for Mr. McAveen's position. He was in charge, I guess, of the maintenance department, and I don't know. But anyway, ultimately, I'm glad that we're able to talk to you. At least you know who I am. But the trustees alone make the decision as to who sits on this board, so it's entirely up to them. But like I said, I don't see our purpose as being a business. Sure, have some fair and appropriate rates for storage, for marinas, and other things. Maybe even a, a fee for people who own dogs. But at the end of the day, um, I, uh, I think that uh, that can be addressed simply by raising everybody's uh, taxes, 10 bucks, 15 bucks, whatever it costs to make it right. And not to worry so much about business. Karen, we're going to start with you on this next question. You didn't get me. Oh. <laughs> I jumped up. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, could you ask the question again? <laughs> How do you think we can increase the revenues in the park? Um, once again, I would want to look at all of the expenses and the fee structure, what um, 
our uh, fees go for or how we come up with the fee and um, I think it would be good to have a committee that would work on that I understand that our our um, we are over expending our income as of now I'm, as of the last board meeting that's what I kind of understood was that our fund balance is decreasing each year and that's never good to be so it really needs to have attention um, and see how we I don't think we'll come up with the extra revenue by um, having uh, commercial or other people coming in we have to pay for our own as owners and I agree with John on the um, rental units um, if we could figure out how many rental units and the other thing I would like to know would be if you have more than one lot I understand you don't pay for the other you only pay for one fee I'm not sure but those are all things that questions I would have and I'd have to see the whole picture before I could say whether or not how we would raise the extra revenue that we are going to need. Do you have an emotional support animal? How many and what are they? How big are they? Me? Yes, please. I have two. Um, they're about the same size. One is my husband's, one is mine. The Chihuahua mixes. My mother's with me right now, and she's uh, got a little one as well. And they're old. They're very old. 13, 12, and 10. So, um, and I have my papers at the office. And as much as I disagree with it, I will comply with the rules to register with the doctor right here. But I would like to uh, kind of think about that, discuss that with the board, <laughs> that they have already, but yes, I do. Yeah. Emotional support animals, you know, and I'm sure many of you have pets, I've had a lot of pets in my life, and I love pets. Matter of fact, I originally wanted to be a veterinarian. Anyway, uh, point is if you need emotional support that means you're emotionally unstable <laughs> oh, oh, I'm, I, 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 it's a joke joke but anyway why do you need emotional support you know anyway uh, and, and so I believe these doctors are just writing this stuff up it's like yeah hey I've got a dog and I want to you know have it at uh, trailer states well more and more uh, people in the community have pets and more and more people that have those pets aren't cleaning up after them and I don't know if you like dogs barking in your neighborhood but there's plenty around that do that can populate the residents I didn't make the rules I didn't make the charter but it says that this community is supposed to be pet free and there's a special little section for that everybody's just getting around that uh, you know by going to a doctor and they're signing off on I say Maybe it's time to call the doctor in and say, you know, I asked somebody that has an emotional support animal. I said, are you, uh, you know, emotionally unstable? And of course not. Well, you know, there you go. But my doctor says I am. So I don't have any. And uh, I also believe that if you have pets, then it makes you less sociable. You know, you're not out meeting people. You're staying home with scruff. Just uh, again, my opinions. I'm not here to make friends. I'm, I'm here to, to go ahead and speak the, my truth. Thank you. I do not have any pets, but I have had pets for most of my life. And um, I think it's a personal choice um, whether to have pets or not. I know it's a big issue in the park here, um, and I don't know what the answer would be, but I do not have any pets. Before I moved here in about 2004, I had St. Bernard was my pet. But I found a good home for the St. Bernard before I moved to Trailer States, and I have not had any pets since. Thank you. Uh, John, we'll start with you. It's hard to read the uh, printing here. Would it be easy or difficult to computerize our park 
to assist in transferring and communicating communications <coughs> such as emails. Transparency. Transparency, got it. Transparency and communication system. I, I'm not sure that I completely heard what you're saying. Would it be easy as you said? Yeah, I don't know, computer savvy or anything. I guess that's more what it is. Yeah. Well, and, and the laws that would do it, I guess. I have a copy of my resume here if anybody wants it after and want to pick one up, but uh, including the board. But uh, I was hired in 1984, I believe, with Boyd Corporation as an accounting manager of a 50,000 square foot facility in Portland, Oregon. In addition to that, the, the my responsibilities were we were just uh, putting in a, a new computer system for inventory control. And uh, anyway, like I said, the company did about 20 million in sales. I was in charge of inventory control and all accounting. And uh, there was a corporate office down in the San Francisco Bay Area where I ended up getting promoted and transferred to a year later. I was in charge of all data processing, information technology. So would it be easy? Uh, a lot easier today than it was back in the mid 80s, but uh, certainly. And I really think there should be transparency of uh, communications between the trustees outside the meetings and anybody else. And it should be publicly accessible so we know what's going on and that the community can put forth their concerns and they get answers and, or at least a response. So, so I think it would be easy and I think it would be beneficial. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Um, yes, I think it would be easy. I've been working with computers since the 80s. I had a Commodore 64 and I, <laughs> um, and I've continued. I, I find them fascinating and I enjoy figure, or enjoying, I enjoy how they work and they're really the best way to communicate. I've uh, um, in fact, I had written a letter to the, or a note to the board about having the minutes on the, because it's so easy once you have a document that you to just put it on the trailer web or the trailer state's website. Um, I uh, like I said, I set up and managed a computer network for two locations, and um, I did all the bookkeeping using the computer. Um, so. And the same thing on the township board. I set up everything for the computers. And, and so I think it would be fairly easy and a good way to um, communicate with the residents. I find that our Tribune is pretty much the same every month. And um, I'm not quite sure how it works as far as what can be put in the Tribune. Um, I hear things about commercial, but there's advertising in the Tribune, so I guess you could advertise. But anyway, um, I do think computers w can be easily set up to work for this board. Thank you. I think the better we get our communication, the better off we are. And uh, we're in a time area now that things are improving at rocket speed. So you always got to control the cost of what you do, but anytime you can improve the communication, then that's what this is. We should do it. I totally agree. <laughs> we need to have the communication. We need to be able to access it. When the person means anything seems to be on the computer now, um, I don't know how that would go if you have a programmer or um, somebody that's going to, to set up a system for you, I'm, I'm not sure how your system is all related now. I know you go to trailerofstates.com and you can send messages back and forth. Um, it might need to be updated yet, but I totally agree with them and using the more computers, more programs. I don't really. <laughs> Denise, we're back to you. Do you believe board documents, including minutes and agenda documents, should be posted on the website? Yes, I do. That it just um, helps with communication. Yes. Yes. Yes, and I think they should be transcribed. Uh, I mean, there's a, you know, 
if you can speak into a microphone right now and it, it, it makes the words come out. But I had read and reviewed some of the minutes before where there was important information that was left out of those minutes and I actually questioned why that was left out and either it was deliberately or it was just uh, negligent oversight. So yeah, I really believe they should be transcribed. I mean, Dragon naturally speaking just automatically puts it out there so and it would be easy. <laughs> Bruce? Yep. This is kind of a, a different one. Why don't they sell uh, the pro church property, trailer states 10? So what about it? Why don't they sell it? It was a question, why don't they sell the uh, property we bought? Uh, <laughs> maybe they don't can't get enough money for it. But uh, I think that that's a, a committee issue to, to invite. When I say a committee issue, I'm talking about appointed by the board to give information back to the board, okay? Uh, I, I think there's been a couple of good ideas what it could be used for, uh, but I would, I would prefer a group of people to study it and, and propose the ideas to it. I think they're sitting on a gold mine. I think that um, as the property values increase around here, people are building all the time. You've got a lot of people coming into the, the floor, what they say, thousands of people a day. Sooner or later, that is, it, the property is going to be those millions. Uh, that is my thought. Um, I wouldn't do anything with it. I keep it maintained in a little park like that. Uh, if people want to go and sit with their chairs or whatever, and just relax under the green of the trees and stuff because you don't have that much room here. That I would just wait it out. I wouldn't sell it back. I wouldn't sell it to anybody. I wouldn't build on it. Because I know it's going to go up. Thank you. Well, that property, and I think we're all aware, has one ingress and one egress. And if you <coughs> sold it to an outside party, we have to wrap it on. I'm sorry, John. Is everything good? Okay. Well, that would be, uh, you know, terrible for the people that live on that street. I think it was in Texas or is it one over here? Anyway, there's only one ingress and egress. Can you imagine general public, you know, if somebody built something back there coming in and out? And it, would, it would be ridiculous. Uh, somebody suggested, and I'm not, I didn't turn in a suggestion for the meeting tonight about that property, but they suggested maybe some storage. Uh, you know, units, in addition to maybe some recreational facilities over there. And uh, I mean, it could be for, you know, owners only kind of thing. And they pay an appropriate amount of rent. So uh, there is an opportunity to make additional income and at the same time pay off, you know, whatever improvements were made. But I don't think it should be sold because of that one problem, that ingress and that egress, it would be ridiculous. Denise, Denise you have I to answer. Yeah. Denise I have to answer. answer. Yeah. What was the question? Is the 10 property? Yeah. Was, do we, why, don't, why didn't we sell it? Why don't we sell it? Sell? I don't know. Why, but <laughs> we bought it, and I'm not sure how, for how much. Um, I guess I it's another area I would have to look into. I know there's a lot of people that want to develop it, but I think until we have our budget under control and our revenues, we really shouldn't put any money into that property. Um, but that's my opinion. The final question would be, how would you respond to a letter from the board regarding possible violations on your property? <coughs> Is that too many? Oh, hell. No, I, I, one more time. I think it's me. Yeah. No, no. I think it's me, yeah. Um, how would I respond to violations on my property? I guess um, I would try to fix them. I, have, I had one uh, letter sent to me. It was um, during the summer about my grass was needed to be cut and um, but I had somebody cutting it and that was but it was taken care of and so that's why I'm coming down and 
once one other month during the year to take care of my yard. Um, of course, it depends what it is, but I was going to get with whoever's representing the board and make sure I understand what it is, and I try my best to solve it. Exactly. Any Rectify the situation and get it done. I uh, had someone come over and, uh, and, and building something, just a, a slab, and I had an architecture review committee member come over, and I'll just mention his name, Dave Barry, nice guy, came over and then he told me every slab in Florida needs a building permit. And it's like, hey, buddy, you know, I've worked in the concrete business with other people in a, in a commercial fashion. It doesn't. It's not a structure. It doesn't. Anyway, he told me it had to be back on a setback, this, that, the other. I said, listen, can you go down to the building department and get this definitively answered? I said, but not before. I did a bunch of research and showed him the law, and he still couldn't make a decision. And then he was reluctant to go down. I said, I'll go down with you. Whatever we have to do, let's get this ironed out. He says, so anyway, eventually he went down. He says, I'm sorry, I owe you an apology. I said, well, who told you what the law is, is how it applied to me? He said, Dennis Crooks, the one guy that's been on the Architecture Review Committee the longest. Well, it turns out I deposed all the people on the Architecture Review Committee. This board has the right to appoint people to that Architecture Review Committee to tell you if there's something right or wrong. Anyway, they do not have the power, according to Mr. Trotter and our attorney, to remove those people. There's five people on that uh, architecture review committee. Uh, none of them know each other. They said they haven't had a committee meeting in literally forever. And it's, it's never open to the public. They don't do this, which is all, in my personal opinion, I don't want to say professional, uh, basically against the Sunshine Law. But uh, Mrs. Dillo came over to my house last year. I had a motorhome parked in my front yard. My mom was there for a week and sister and stuff. They were sleeping inside. I was working on it, sleeping outside. She was not allowed to store it here. Well, I wasn't storing it, I was using it. So while she told me that another time, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Smith came over to my house and told me I had a boat in my front yard. I was working on it. You can't, you know, you gotta move it right away. Well, that was the first time that I ever had anybody contact with the Board of Trustees. And I went ahead and I moved it immediately. One minute. But the last issue I had was somebody was building something across the street, and Mr. Smith, along with uh, Architecture Review Committee member um, Mike Neal, who this lawsuit is against, uh, basically came over there. And uh, at the end of the day, I said, "Listen, it's not my property. It's across the street, two doors down." He had summoned me over. I said, "Why don't you go ahead and write them a letter?" So in response to your question as to whether or not and how I respond to a letter, I respond very civilly to a letter and appropriately. But in this instance, it's like they like to police the community, literally. And it's like, hey, you know, write a letter. I suggest it to them over and over and over, and they wouldn't leave me alone and drive away. One thing led to another, and maybe you know, maybe you don't, but you could read the lawsuit. Uh, Mr. Neal, I said, hey, listen, do you want a fair fight? And he got out of the car and wanted to fight me. This is an architecture review committee member. Anyway, I put my dudes up, I waited for him to make the first move, and I popped him in the nose. <laughs> that ends the question. Uh, Mark? Mark, can you take the table off and put it up? Do the board members have any questions I'd like to ask? I'll start with the board. You've got to ask everyone the same question. But you all uh, indicated that you were uh, residents of the park. I don't think you all actually stated for the record that you are actually owners of property in the park, which is a qualification. And I'd like you all to state if that is true, that you are owners of the park. Owners in the park. Who do you want to start with? Uh, Denise? I'm an owner. Yes. I'm an owner. I'm an owner. Thank you. Um, are there any trustee positions that you don't want to fill? Uh, Bruce? Uh, anywhere on the sign is fine. I'm good with anything. JD? 
I'm good with anything, but I, you know, at the end of the day, I'll be putting my two cents in as to you know how the, the trustee should, uh, what the responsibilities should be, and what the uh, policies and procedures uh, should be uh, amended to include or exclude, so that uh, they perform their function more efficiently and in line with what the responsibilities are according to the charter. Please. I would do whatever I was assigned. Um, as far as the rest of it, I think that would be a board okay. discussion. Um, so, Karen, are, are you interested in both the one-year and two-year appointments, or is there only one of them that you'd be interested in? Pardon me? Yes. Yes, either. I'm not, I'm not thinking about the procedure. Uh, yeah, and I'm particularly interested. I don't know if Mr. McElveen's was two years, but uh, I just wanted that position because that's one I'm most interested in that has uh, some supervisory capacity over maintenance. The positions are as trustee, not as a particular job. I understand that, but when you were elected as trustee or appointed or elected as trustee, uh, you were given uh, not only one trustee's responsibility, but maybe two trustees' responsibility. North and South Public Relations, if I uh, remember correctly. So, yeah, I mean, if you, if you change what those responsibilities are and they're not specific, I understand. Denise? <laughs> are you interested in both? Or either either position. Either position, yes. Um, yeah. Thank you. Bruce? Either. Thank you. That's all my question, Chairman. Blaine? In, who do I start with? Yep. Here's the question. In preparation of this meeting here, uh, did, did you review the policies and procedures or even look at the budget of what's being proposed for 2021? We uh, I guess we'd have to start with Bruce. Uh, very briefly, I'd have to look at it. Yeah. I'm sorry. Very briefly, I'd have to look at it in detail. Karen? Just briefly. I'm sorry, I didn't study it because I didn't even really know I was going to do this until Friday. I thought it was premature. I'm, you know, until I'm a member of uh, the board, I don't see any reason that I have to become that knowledgeable about it. But uh, once on the board, certainly I would put forth my wise counsel. And the second question. No, I, I, I don't the answer. Um, uh, I did study it, and I downloaded all the PTs into my computer so that I can organize them and figure out what they are. I especially looked at the interview process, and I printed that out. That's my expertise: is the computer and delving into the rules and regulations and how they're set up. Um, that's, yes, I did. And the second question I have is how many uh, board meetings have you attended or watched on Channel 732 to become familiar with our <coughs> procedures? Yes, no, I guess it would be care on this. Me one. too. <clears throat> two that I've been actually physically here. Yeah, I've recorded, I don't know, probably 10, and then uh, watched them in detail, taking notes of the board meetings. I've been here physically, I think, three times. I haven't been here physically, but I've watched them pretty much routinely, monthly, <coughs> on the computer. Uh, I listen to them on YouTube fairly frequently. Uh, I'm a pretty good friend of Lonnie and the... Uh, 732 room and we talk about it much fun too. Thank you. Uh, any reason why you didn't run for the board at the time of the election? I guess start with John. Um, I really, I, well at, at the time of the election I believe uh, we were involved in litigation and that all of you were named as defendants. I, I didn't really think that uh, it was appropriate. Uh, it, although I, I considered running for the uh, board, but I just didn't think it was appropriate. And uh, you know, now that I know so much more about each and every one of you and what you do, 
Uh, you know, there are all these open questions that I'm looking forward to having answered at some appropriate time, maybe when I'm a, either a trustee or uh, through some sort of informal or formal method. But yeah, um, I, uh, I'm glad to be here now and we'll see where it goes. What was your question? Any particular reason why you didn't oh. run uh, for the board at the time of the regular election? Um, I thought about it and I looked at it, um, but um, it wasn't until um, this past few months that I've been re or listening to the board member meetings and stuff and realized that I probably could contribute something to them. Well, I, I thought there were enough people that ran, ran for the board, uh, and the reason I went this time is because of the experience I've got of, of the operation, and uh, I, I wanted to fill the gap if, if I was needed. I voted the first time around, um, but this last time I didn't know that there was an election. I, I don't know. I, I believe I wasn't here at the time. So my apologies. I didn't know. Yeah, one more. If there's a conflict, I mean, did I answer your question? Yes, he was version. Sorry. If there's a conflict between the park rules and Manatee County law, which way do you think we should go? I believe you'd have to go with the Manatee County laws. It's just like the federal laws. They trickle down to the municipalities. You, we have to eventually go by federal law, but I, I think we ought to get it corrected as soon as possible. That's what we need to do, because I don't think those things. If there are any conflicts like that, I don't think the park intentionally is trying to go against the, the county. Um, I know there's that trickle down effect from federal to state to city to um, county, but I don't know how the county and the city work. But I would, I would go with the county's recommendation because I, I know that they supply a lot of the, the street work and the lights and things there. Um, but I'm sure that, I'm sure that you're in uh, balance with what the Manatee County says. <laughs> Uh, well, it's, I would go with the Manatee County law because the Manatee County law is controlling. You know, there's not really any laws that we can make here. We can make rules, but we can't make laws. And uh, so we're obligated under the law, and uh, no one is above the law, to follow the Manatee County uh, statutes, if you will. Don't want to have uh, in what activities are you involved in in the park? Denise. By activities, do you mean I The things that we offer, the different things. Oh, the things that we offer. There. Oh, I enjoy, I enjoy all of them. The showtime, um, the pool, um, the dances. Um, just in general, this park is... I, I really enjoy the activities here. You can be as busy as you want or not. That's good. Chris? Hand and foot. Don't find it. <laughs> <laughs> every Thursday and Friday night, I go up there and I laugh for a couple of hours. We have a lot of fun. And uh, I, I've done a lot of other things, but I, I've slowed down a little bit in recent years. Uh, yacht Club. I've got your dances. Um, um, I'm Ohio, I just um, got with some people there for that Ohio dinner thing. Um, but basically, I just kind of stay home. I'm working on a flower bed and some things like that, but I'm anxious. I'm kind of shy. <laughs> so. Uh, I'm not super social. I don't get involved in a lot of activities. And it may be the first time any of you or some of you have seen me before. But uh, I play pickleball in the advanced uh, section or something uh, once or twice a week. And but I'm always busy. I always have projects going on. And, you know, just picking this and that hand on. So I'm involved in. I still practice law. Last year I litigated a big case in uh, Baltimore. That I'm glad to say that I won, but uh, I am uh, I'm constantly busy. The last thing I am is bored, 
And I'm very sociable and friendly when I get to meet people, but uh, I have enough friends already. I don't, I mean, I've been to a couple of dances, and uh, anyway, but half the park here is, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're winter residents, and so it's, it's a great thing, and they're totally retired, and so they, you know, all these activities are fantastic. And I'm sure later on, maybe if I, you know, become uh, more of a home buyer, maybe I'll be uh, joining more of the, the social events. But like I said, I, I, I'm here to serve, uh, and, and it's not a popularity contest to, to see the most uh, popular socially. So uh, there you go. That's what I do. Thank you. Do you have any other questions? Yes. No. Who uh -huh. did you start with? Pardon me? Who did you start with? Okay. Denise. Okay. Bruce, what do you see as the major concern facing the park? Well, probably cost. Um, I think we do a pretty good job of keeping activities going. Um, the, the place looks great for as old as we are. Uh, I, I've always been thankful that I have to run into the trailer estates when I was thinking about moving from Oklahoma to Florida. Um, I'd say that's the main thing though. Controlling costs and, and make sure that we keep a safe environment for our residents. Karen, same question. What do you see as the major concern facing the park? I think security. I rarely see police um, driving around or unless we're doing the block watch thing, I, I do feel that security is most important. At least. John, what do you see as the major concern facing the park? I think that uh, one of the major concerns is man, to be perfectly honest, and uh, some of you may know and may not know, but about 10 years ago, not even, this park spent over $1 million in attorney's fees. That would go a long way today. It would still be in the coffers, but it was regarding litigation. And uh, somebody had uh, said that there had been a violation of the Sunshine Law. The trustees are not supposed to conduct any business outside of uh, public meetings that might be voted on. And uh, this woman brought this lawsuit. Anyway, if you bring this lawsuit, you get attorney's fees if you're successful in proving that they but anyway, several residents of the park that are here and no longer here wrote to the judge, you know, this is terrible, a travesty of justice, over one million dollars where all it was was some lady said, hey, listen, they're increasing my marina or storage lot rent by 15, 20 bucks. How simple would that be to solve? No problem, lady, whatever it is, let me pay the 20 bucks for you. Instead, a million dollars later, three or four years later, so I just think, Education, if you will, they've got lawsuits going on right now. This law firm, Playoff Walters and Mark Martin, we lead them around uh, by their their noses, if you ask me. Mark Martin's firm showed up at some depositions that I had. The, the people didn't ask the attorney to be there, didn't know that they were being represented. Anyway, again, I want to be on friendly terms, you know, have uh, intellectual intercourse of good ideas and uh, make sure that the board knows uh, through study and learning what the responsibilities are to improve, make a better community, save money, <coughs> makes money. And uh, so I think that's one of the biggest things that needs to be addressed is the management and then litigation, which costs a ton. And he's going to use it as a major concern based on litigation. I see um, our uh, budget and um, the um, need to take in more revenue to cover our costs. You can't go for many years without covering your costs at least. And you should be have a certain amount of money in reserve that would you could operate for a couple years. Um, and the other thing would be now, I thought that litigation, I read an article online just because I've been studying 
what's going on. That said that the board member had said that, well, the people that were brought the lawsuit had said that they had spent over a million dollars, but that the board member said it wasn't that much. So I, I don't know. I just would be interested to find out how much we did spend. But it doesn't really matter. That's in the past. I'd rather move forward and um, figure things out and make things work. Um, Karen, if you're appointed to the board, would you plan to run for an election in the term your year ends? If I do a good job, you know, if, I, if I can meet all qualifications that the board wants me to do, and if I do a good job, I would probably do that. Would I run if I were appointed? And when the next opening came up, probably yes, but uh, it would depend how well my uh, tenure went and my relationship with the other trustees and whether or not we're working on the same page. But I intend to make sure that we're all working on the same page. Uh, so, uh, yes, I would run. I would serve. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yes, I would consider running when it's the position came up for election. Um, and again, it would depend on how things went. And you never know with, at our age what's going to happen. So <laughs> I think I would run. No problem. Uh, John, do you believe meetings should be held, even if there's no business, needs to be held by the board? No. But I believe that there should be an open communication between the residents or owners, more importantly, and the board, and uh, that I'm sure that they can voice their concerns or send something now if they want something brought up. But uh, if there's no business to be conducted uh, or no important decisions that have to be voted on, no, it would be a waste of everyone's time. Do you believe he should be held even if there's no business to be held by the board? What are, I would look at the rules. I think if, you, if it states that you are to hold monthly meetings, workshops, whatever, I think you should follow the rules. Bruce? Take the question one more. Do you believe he should be held even if there's no business to be held by the board? Yes. Karen? I believe yes. Because there's got to be something going on all the time. <clears throat> last, my last question. I'm, I'm start with Denise on this one. Are you open to examining the budget, and if necessary, should it require an increase in revenue, would you be amenable to increasing for the purpose of revenue? Yes, I would. I, I would have to study the whole thing and understand. But yes, I would. Bruce? Yes, I, but I would hope that we take a close look at where we can save money before we increase it. Yes. John? I'm sorry, can you repeat Are you open to examining the budget, and if necessary, should it require an increase in revenue, would you be amenable to increasing the revenue? Well, I'd be amenable to increase the revenue at any point in time, but the point is, as you know, through what means? Is it raising taxes or is it uh, through some other business uh, idea that we have that raises, uh, you know, raises revenue? But of course, why not raise the revenue and fill the coffers so that we have some cushion uh, and that we don't have to raise people's taxes? But of course. That's not a Mr. Chairman, um, in reviewing the questions of our panel here, um, there, a question was submitted that I'm not real sure is appropriate to ask these four individuals relative to the fact that there is litigation ongoing. And I would just like some sort of a call on this because I think we may be accused of not asking the question when, quite frankly, it's just not something that's appropriate for us. Pass the question up. Beg your pardon? Pass the question up to me. Yeah. No, don't ask me a question. Ask me. You bet. Okay. 
I'm the one who initially tore it up. I was thinking that it just might not be appropriate. Thank you. But I figured I'd better ask. As moderator, I read the question and read the procedures, and I determined by doing that that I thought that it was inappropriate at this time. In the procedures that if the question is determined to be disruptive in nature, seen as a personal attack or inappropriate, the moderator has the prerogative of eliminating the question. Or rewording the question. Well, Wayne, you want to take a look at it? I think you determined it to be correct and it's inappropriate. Right? I think is that the consensus of the board? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Then you're fine. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> With that, we'll close that portion of the meeting. Does anybody need a break? Please don't forget. Oh, I'm sorry. I am sorry. I do apologize. You each get three minutes to, to give your closing Kermit. statement. Kermit's Thank you. Kermit, Kermit, you're still in charge. Go for it. <laughs> I apologize. We're going to start with John. Thank you. Get three minutes to summarize everything. Okay, well, thank you all for being interested enough to attend, and my pitch is really to this board. Now, you know me, I asked you, I think each and every one of you were there, why did you just call me up and we couldn't talk? You know, thank you. this went on. I still think there are some major concerns that need to be addressed. I know I've uh, got to know you, Mr. Elton, uh, but uh, the long and short of it is, uh, I hope that you will consider adding me a board and uh, you know I'm not, not always argumentative I have something I think would be uh, beneficial to the community to contribute and uh, I have the education training experience um, which again I just think would be beneficial to you all and to this community and thank you for your consideration I think under the circumstances that there may be some hard feelings that uh, you might have a difficult decision choosing me but Anyway, with that said, I want to tell you that I hold no ill will towards any of you. I appreciate the fact that you're attempting to do your best, and there's a lot of long hours and, and stuff involved in volunteer work. And uh, with that, you know, I uh, express my appreciation and thank you for your consideration. Um, I want to thank you for considering me. Um, I feel that um, I could offer a lot as far as the um, organization and the computer part of it. I also, um, I was wondering, we don't have any control over the taxable value. I don't know if you can answer me anyway, but the taxable value, it's a fee that we charge to cover our, okay. Um, anyway, um, I hope you would consider me for the board. I thought long and hard because I know you are all volunteers and that's amazing. Um, you put in a lot of time. I'm not sure, I still am not sure, <laughs> but I know myself well enough to know that once I'm committed that I'll go over, you know, beyond what's required, so thank you. I'm going to make it short and sweet. And the reason I did it because I thought the uh, board needed a little help right now. I've got some experience, especially on the on checking yards and all the various things we need to do. And uh, so I spoke up uh, hoping to fill, fill the gap. And, and I am here year round. Sure. I want to thank you all for considering me. Um, I want you to know I am a determined person. Once I set my teeth into something, I will complete that position. I will complete any job you need me to do. 
I have good experience. And I, I really believe I'm a good people person. And even um, I am a hard worker. I've never had complaints of anybody I've ever worked for in the city. I've got a lot, a lot of, of recommendation. Um, I, I don't know what you expect of me at this point, but I'm much, much willing to learn and to be an asset to trailer estates. I'd like to thank the uh, candidates for taking time to come and answer the questions. Thank the residents that tur turned in questions, and uh, it's been very informative. I will turn it back over to the board, to the chairman, and the board will make their decision at a future board meeting. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes the, not the interview for candidates. Does the board need to take a five-minute recess? Please. Maybe longer. Five-minute recess. We'll meet back here at five after this morning. Chair of the State Board meeting, uh, before we start with public comments and questions, please turn off your phones. And please do not whisper. These microphones we're using pick up everything. And even the smallest whisper gets picked up. And when you're having it on the air later on, people hear it in the background and they complain to us why is there noise in the background. So I'm going to ask you with all due diligence to try to keep the whispering. If you want to go and whisper to the side, we aren't picking you up. Thank you. Uh, we're now open for <coughs> public comments and questions. Okay. Playtime is uh, on Tuesday afternoons from 3 to uh, 5 or something like that, and on Thursdays from 9 in the morning till noon, I believe. Um, the papers I've given you, the first paper is the application that Tim had for the, 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 to form the club. And all it says is the purpose of the club is advance play and pickleball and drills. Um, the second paper you have is uh, PP42, and it states that uh, um, for the benefit of those that support these facilities through payments of the Parks Recreation District tax. At the bottom of the page, I've underlined, I've highlighted two things. The first one says all meetings held by a club or organization must be registered with Taylor States Parks and recreation and must be open to all residents of Taylor States Park and Recreation District. 
And then the second line says, failure to comply to these rules shall be for denial of the use, <coughs> shall be cause for denial of the use of facilities at Taylor State Park and Recreation. The second page is Taylor State Park and Recreation District Rules and Regulations. And I've uh, highlighted there also section A, section one, paragraph A, uh, explains who can use Taylor Estates facilities, uh, owners, their family members, and so on. In section two, part B, uh, it states that a guest who can use these facilities must have a guest card that's obtained from the office, and uh, or or they must be accompanied by a property owner just briefly there. And under part F of that, it states that, uh, explains what the guests can do. They cannot hold or any membership or office or anything in an organization. Then if you follow down to section five, it says any individual other than a property owner, owner renter, guest, or according to sections one, two, and three found in, found in, or 20 seconds, okay. The back page is uh, section two, part B, says at no time can the number of individuals participating outside the park uh, have visitors in excess of the members of the park. I wish I could have said more, but I addressed you on this and thank you for your time. Um, if you just follow through, um, I'll wait to hear from you. Thank you. Eaton, Illinois Avenue, 2018, and I'm just wanting to address the, uh, I hear a rumor going around that the rates on the rent is going to go way up. Uh, I've been here 22 years. There's been, uh, you know, it's, oh, it cost so much money, we had it dredged. Well, I can remember three times in the last, as long as I've been here, you all had the money to do the dredging and then spend it on something else. So now all of a sudden there's another painting. But now, one thing you all need to think about is, okay, there's not too many trailer parks in this area that has its own marina that we own the property, okay? So why are we, it makes our property more valuable because of the marina, but then when we have a boat, they're penalizing us. That's not right. That's not right at all. If the fee has to go up a little bit, but not double, crying out loud, that's a little bit silly. And also, we've got out-of-parkers coming in, or non-residents, renting slips. I know two different guys that can't, they're residents, but they can't get their boat, and the renters, there's no slips. You know, if you compare our marina to like the coast one, Bayshore, Okay, now they just spent a bunch of money on that over there, no doubt. But look what they've got. You know how many feet? Do you, okay, I've got a 22 foot boat. And I parked over on the north side. It's a booger to get in and out of there if the wind's not right. Because there's no room. We're cramped in. And, you know, at the price that I'm paying for the slip, I can go along with that, that's fine. But you take it up double, how many guys are gonna pull their boat out? And maybe, I don't know, maybe that's what you got in the back of your mind, I don't know. But we need to take care of our residents first. That's what I said. Ed, please don't leave. Um, I, I got terribly confused at the beginning. What, would you spell your last name for me? Uh, H-E-A-T-O-N. Thank you. And you are at 2018 Illinois? Yes, ma'am. Excellent. Thank you so much. Okay. <clears throat> My apologies for that. Good morning. Don Meadows, 1815 Ohio Avenue. Uh, Whitten friend of mine went and got a copy of the budget and we've been going over about the increase of the marinas and the increase of block rent and everything else. So, this is my statement to the board. 
This park was built for the people and by the people. I think it's come a time that the board needs to take a look at the large cost of the park, including labor, overtime costs, cable and internet costs, and other ways for more income. The park was built as a retirement computer, not an investment community. There's a lot of ruin units in this park. The owners are making a huge profit off the backs of ones trying to live here and retire here. I think it's time that the rental units assessment fees double. Some call it owning the boat a luxury. Is it having a pool, hot tub, shuffleboard, exercise room, horseshoe court, wood shop, all luxury items for this park? They're all luxury items. We always want to compare rates to everyone else. So I went on the internet, it's all public information, to Bray Park. The Aquatic Center, to be a member to use the pool and the hot tub, $25 a month or $300 a year. Pickleball, with a paid membership of $300, it costs you $3 a person every day to play pickleball. The gamer room, when someone uses the rental, $40 to $55 per hour. This is all on our website. Everyone here gets to use all this stuff for free. But because we're boat owners, you guys expect us to pay. In comparison to boat owners, Tropical Isles, again, it's on their website. Resident-owned co-op marine mobile home park. The wet slip rail, $6.50 a foot for park residents. Seven dollars a foot if you pay by the month. Six fifty you pay by the year. That's one hundred ninety-five to two hundred ten dollars a year for a thirty-foot slip. Not five hundred or a thousand dollars. Storage lot annual cost a year for a resident one hundred fifty dollars. That's just to name a few around here. I think it's time you need to revisit the cost and look elsewhere for money. Thank you. Good morning, Dottie Deer Wester, 1804, Ohio. Due to the popularity of the computer club, our membership keeps growing and attendance to our meetings and training keep growing. As a result, we've had to change our location from the telephone room and the activity building to the small hall. And I just wanted to announce that the March meeting in April, which are the last two for the season, will be held in the small hall on the second, uh, second Wednesday, same time, 10 a.m. for the membership meeting, and 11 o'clock for the training. Updated flyers and channel 732 uh, slide will, are being posted. There will be a veterans pancake breakfast on March 7th uh, for veterans and the spouse and contact me at 707-972-5055 for details. This veteran, veterans pancake breakfast is co-sponsored by the beautification committee, the veterans club of Trader Estates and the American Legion Bayshore Post 317, of which I am the commander. And my third comment is, how do we get a copy of the candidates' um, applications? Thank you. Good morning. My name is Rick Brigham, 2204 Indiana Avenue. Before you turn to start the listening, please. R-I-G-D-O-N. Thank you. I am also a boat owner. Uh, the last time that we had this issue arise, uh, I, I voiced my opinions, and I felt like I was belittled by some of the board members uh, telling me that if I couldn't afford it, I shouldn't own it. Uh, big boys and their toys, stuff, stuff of that nature. I, I didn't appreciate that none whatsoever. It seems to me that every time we fall short on our budget, someone wants to come and scrape more money off the marina. The marina has been used as a cash cow in here for a long, long time. The marina and the storage lots are the only two things in this park that bring money into the park, for, other than the fees, obviously. There's only two things in here that create capital. 
that you use for everything in the park. But then when it's time to spend a little money on the marina, everybody gets upset. Well, we got to spend two hundred thousand dollars to get it dredged. Well, where did all the money go that came out of that marina over the years? Anyway, if you're looking to balance the budget, here's a couple of things that I suggest. Number one, I don't have anything at all against any of our employees. We've got some great employees here. But where do you go any place in this country that you can get free health care? Nowhere. I worked for my entire working career and never got free health care. Everything, every time I had health care or any benefits, I paid for them. And I think 90% of the people in this room feel the same way. There's a big part of our budget we can cut out by at least making them pay a partial premium. The other thing is the cable TV. This $583, $83,000 a year for cable TV for this park. Well, that's all well and good for the people that live here year round, but the people that are only here for nine months out of the year, you're paying for cable TV for nine months when there's nobody there to use it. That should be a negotiated situation. I, I just can't believe that we're, we're coughing up that kind of money just to, for the cable TV and the internet. When there's, like I said, the biggest percentage of the time, there's nobody here to even use it. I understand, uh, I understand that it is a, uh, a perk for the park, but Jesus, you know, to me, that's just a huge expenditure that don't need to be done. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And uh, I hope more of the boat owners have something else to say. Good morning. My name is Donna Fishburn, 1607 Iowa Avenue. I wasn't sure if this was the correct time to bring it up, but I agree solely with the man who came up and talked about the marina. That was that was one of my concerns um, about the marina fees being doubled. Um, I think that's quite extreme. Also, I heard a rumor that the fees are being raised between 18 and 19 percent, the park fees. If somebody can clarify that and let the residents know and their voices could be heard on that. And the last question I have is, is there any kind of noise ordinance in TE Park for the residential areas? Thank you. Hi, uh, Richard Daigle and Iowa Ave. Um, we're here to talk about the marina as well. I think the marina is a great benefit. Uh, I have a boat, I also have a trailer in the storage lot. Um, I think the fees should be based on what the actual costs are to operate the marina. Uh, to actually see the budget put together that would identify future dredging costs, seawall repairs, pylons, uh, sidewalks, and based on a five-year plan, I think that understanding the total cost of operating the marina would help you in establishing the fees. I'm not opposed to increasing the fees to the marina and the storage units, as long as I understand where the money is and where it's being spent. Thank you. Oh. I'm sorry, Richard, spell your last name for me, please. D-A-I-G-L-E. And your street address in Iowa. 2209 Iowa. 2209, excellent, thank you so much. Good morning, my name is Richard Jundrin. Uh, I live at 2209 Iowa. I have been here for eight years. Uh, I've had a boat for seven years uh, and, and have enjoyed the marina. However, I think this rate that you're looking to change is a little ridiculous. I don't know how you came to these figures. Uh, if someone could explain that to me, I'd be really appreciate it. Can somebody give me some kind of an idea? I guess not. We're not allowed to respond to you. That's oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. okay, thank you, thank you. Um, what Richard said is pretty, pretty well to the point. If you have to raise it, if you gotta raise them, raise them for a reason. Do a study, 
and come up with a figure and then come back to the people who live here. Um, arbitrarily raising these prices, just, it just doesn't get it. Um, and, and I think, I don't know how many of you have boats or if any of you have boats, but again, what the gentleman said about big boy toys, they're not really big boy toys. They're just hobbies like pickleball or anything else. Thank you for your time, and I hope you take everything that we've said uh, and chew on it for a while. Are you ready, Lori? Yep. Karen Harker, 6907 West Bayou Lane. Um, I'm the secretary of the Computer Club of Trailer Estates, and I just wanted to give you an update on the spectrum issues we've been having, the residents of the park have been experiencing. I'm happy to say that at our last meeting, I encouraged members that have had reoccurring issues with connecting to the Wi-Fi hotspots to file a complaint form with the State of Florida Consumer, Consumer Affairs Division. And I got a response within, within less than a week of submitting my complaint. My issue has been resolved. My husband and I are able to get our devices connected to the Wi-Fi. Three other members of the club that filed um, complaints have been contacted by Spectrum, so they are getting resolution to the problem. If anybody else still has reoccurring issues that they're not getting resolution, to using their services that come with our contract. I'm still encouraging if you want to file a complaint so you have a one-on-one -on -one, um, appeals representative handling your issue and correcting it for you, I have the forms. Thank you. Dennis Whitener, 1711 Michigan Avenue. <clears throat> I'm here to uh, speak up about the <clears throat> proposed increases in the marina and the parking uh, increases. Uh, I'm a boat owner and uh, I rent a slip here in the, for the rental space. And uh, <clears throat> really, I don't know one boat owner that doesn't mind paying this fair share, but there's uh, approximately 120 slips in the marina, and I don't think 120 people ought to take uh, take it on their back to provide the lighting around here, the whole park, or you know, just <clears throat> things in general. Uh, there's about 200 sli uh, rental spots for trailers and motorhomes. Where you know that's a small percentage for the 1,200 trailers that are here. So I don't think we should uh, have to carry that on their back. <clears throat> But I was looking at the difference in the seasonal recreation, the dollars outlay and the income for that, and it's uh, <clears throat> about three to one, the outlay for the income on that. So maybe that's something that you should look into because really, <clears throat> I don't think we have to uh, put it on our back to uh, cover the shortfalls. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, I'm Kathy Tennyson, 6603 Oregon Street. Um, I have a one, my first question is easy. I understand our fiscal year is October 1st. I'm wondering why I'm still reading it as January 1st in the charter. Will that ever be corrected so at least they're consistent and they look legit? I'm just wondering. Secondly, I have a question on deed restrictions number three. It states the use of any and all lots, blocks, or parcels, save and accept those owned by TE, shall be limited to single family residential use. Single family seems self explanatory to me. Residential use, does that mean? Every lot shall be limited to a resident, or every lot is limited to what the resident wants to use it for. I'm, I'm seeing where 
There are there have been several places, and I'm not saying it's right or wrong, who live on one side of the street, they buy a vacant lot across the street, build a garage, there's no assessment. We lose an assessment. So I would like an explanation on what exactly residential limitation means. And that's number three in deed restrictions. Lastly, I would not want to be the treasurer of this place for no reason. <laughs> it's hard work, I understand that, but my background is whenever there were financial issues at our hospital, every one of us was requested, basically mandated to find areas of savings. I was never allowed to just say, let's just go raise the patient room rate. That wasn't acceptable. We had to find ways to cut. I, for one, would really like to know that everything was a deep dive. You dug into everything that was a cost. And I'd like to know that the employees here, I would like their salaries and benefits, medical, whatever, I would like that in compared, see a comparison of the Manatee County employees. We are in Manatee County. Nancy County Courthouse or whatever government has secretaries and maintenance grounds. I would like to see a direct comparison on how each one of those. Thirty seconds. And I'm I'm good. So thank you. Just pull it down. Yes. I'm Wanda Blackwood. I live at 2113 Ohio Avenue, one and a half lots. I've been here for 26 years and over. I'm speaking on behalf of many residents who share a concern regarding the method of how our assessment fees are determined. According to the book, A History of Trailer Estates, I quote, on January 2nd, 1959, the Gulf Depart Development Corporation sent the residents a letter informing them that their assessments would now be $120 for a single lot, $146.40 for one and a half lots, and $172.80 for double lots, end quote. Of course, the fee has changed, but now the assessments are figured differently than they were before. When did this procedure change? Why did this method of calculation change? Our park is losing money by the present practice of how we are assigning ass assessment fees. It appears that one owner who owns a lot and a half, a double lot, three lots, is paying the same assessment fee as an owner who owns only one lot. If this is true, this is not equitable nor fair. How can one measured lot stretch into two or three lots and still be considered and assessed as if it were one lot? At one time, there were 1,400 lots. Now it appears to be 1,268 lots. This is a loss of 132 lots. Take 132 lots times the fee of $1,075. This, this amounts to $142,000. $142,000 the park is losing each year. Are lots disappearing off the trailer estate's records? This is bringing in less revenue to maintain, support, and preserve our piece of property in paradise, as some people call it. Ordinarily, lots, land, or acreage is assessed by measured size of the land owned, as it was when the park was developed. When did this change? Why was it changed? Where can we find the documentation regarding this information? These questions have been asked in the past years, but they have been tapered. Please, may we hear a concern to, uh, about this concern at the next board meeting, if not today? And uh, thank you. Wanda? Yes. I'm sorry, give me your last name again. Blackwood. Blackwood, okay, thank you. <coughs> there we go. 
Gary Borowski, 6505 Washington Street. And this is behalf of the uh, boat owners and the park. Uh, Can you speak just on the mic? Put the mic back on. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. So it's in behalf of the uh, rental fees that are proposed increase. A lot of these people are on Social Security, and they only get so much coming in. I believe that a lot of them are going to give up the boating and uh, just can't afford anymore. And there's also a place up on, uh, on Cortez, there's the uh, uh, trailer park up there where they charge $400 a year where they store the boat themselves and you have the, uh, the option of the rental of, the, uh, of your skip right on, right on Cortez. And like I said, if you review some of these costs that other parks are, are uh, charging, you can see that this is going to be an outrageous fee for, uh, for such a cash cow that I guess has been going on for a while. Well, thank you. Good morning. Bob Hanna, 6921 Park. Give me your house number again, I'm sorry. 6921. Thank you. I just titled my little note in common sense. Um, back to the marina. I've talked to quite a few people who haven't are wondering why the boat ramp can't be used in the evenings and weekends. Many people want to go out and fish evenings and weekends too. Not everybody has a dock. In fact, can't even get a dock there right now. Um, I was told one time that the uh, lease we give the marina includes them managing the ring. Um, so my thought is, next time there's a lease run, I would hope to take a look at that and see if that ramp could be available to all residents 24-7, or at least evenings and weekends. Um, this is a small problem that we had a holiday weekend, uh, Thanksgiving weekend, Got the boat in just in time, 4:30. Um, but then they closed the gate. And Friday we had a breakdown, but we couldn't take the boat out of the water until Monday. Uh, and I've had other people they come in with jet skis and wanted to go out in the evening to close. They just we have a marine. It seems like we should have a boat ramp. Um, and then, the only other thing I wanted to mention while I'm up here was it um, does concern the town. Of course, we're going to see that tonight. But when I think about what does the place actually need, all right, we don't have money to do a lot. So it seems to me what it needs right now is pickleball courts. I'm not a pickleball player. Uh, I'm a voter, and you know that. But, uh, I stay a lot at a place called Sunday Fun. They have 16 outdoor pickleball courts and they're always full. And um, put a few of those in the, in the uh, tent area. Doesn't require any uh, water, sewage, or anything like that. So that's all, just a couple ideas for now. Thank you. Sandra Toria, 6905 West Bayou. Uh, from listening to other people talk, it's obvious that the park needs some revenue, and this may seem puny, but when the Shuffleboard Club hosts state tournaments, which they do four times a year, Trailer States receives no money from this from the outside park res visitors, even though the park's large hall is often closed for use to park residents that pay HOA fees while the tournament is going on. I think we should charge visitors some fee for its use, whether it be two, three, four dollars times 120 people that come for the tournament, it will add a little bit to our revenue. I would like you to think about that and let me know what you think in two weeks. Thank you. Any other residents' comments or questions? 
See, now I'm going to close that. Uh, we'll start with Sandy. I'm I'd like to follow up on what Clayton was talking about, uh, the pickleball and uh, the use of the facilities. Uh, I went through the uh, PP42 and the park uh, uh, rules and regulations regarding the use of the facilities. And I came up with several of the same things that he came up with. Uh, talking about uh, uh, in the PP42, uh, the uh, district facilities organized for the benefits of those who support the facilities through payment of the recreation district taxes. And uh, then uh, that's one area in the PP42 where this issue is addressed. It's also addressed over in the rules and regulations. And PP42, is, as I read it, uh, it, it's referencing mostly the meetings and where it talks about uh, uh, who can and can't uh, can attend the meetings and, and the obligations there. But then you go to uh, the uh, rules and regula regulations that he passed out, the area that uh, caught my attention was uh, in uh, section two, talks about guest and B. And it talks about a guest card must be obtained from Trader State's office prior to, I realize all of you can read this, but prior to any guest using any of the Trader State's common recreation facilities without being accompanied by a property owner or a resident. And as I was, uh, read this, you know, I, I can say, well, I can assume that uh, if someone does not have a guest pass, they must be accompanied by a resident uh, of the park. And uh, then it goes further, it says, and card must be presented <laughs> at each event attended. To me, in reading that, there seems to be a little bit of ambiguity <coughs> involved here. Uh, where it talks about a card must be presented at each event attended. Who is to present the card? Is it the guest or is it the owner? Does a guest also need a card to present? Whereas up, up above we kind of indicate that uh, if they're accompanied by an owner, they don't need uh, the card. Uh, then uh, going over, uh, we talk about, it's in this uh, same section, in section two, uh, B, and this is paragraph C. It talks about the guest card for an overnight guest may be issued for this specific period of time, not to exceed 30 days a year. And then a guest card shall be issued after a written responsibility and particip participation agreement, waiver and release form is signed by the property <coughs> owner or renter resident sponsor and guest. It's also referencing that this form and waiver agreement must be signed by a guest in, the, in addition to the uh, 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 resident owner or, or renter uh, there. And I guess going down to the uh, areas for uh, really approaching is in uh, uh, part B, rules govern use of facilities, section two and uh, basically all four of those areas. And uh, I've been receiving some uh, email messages from the Pickleball Club, and uh, from the messages I've been getting, I have no first-hand knowledge, but looking at these, uh, uh, there's some violation of, the, of our rules there. It says no property owner can reserve a function room more than two times per month. And from what I've been hearing, uh, that's kind of been happening. And it says, if a property owner wishing to reserve a function room more than two times per month, the event must be listed as public event, uh, supposed to be of the park count on the park calendar, allow any property owner, renter, or guest of either to attend. Uh, and again, it seems like uh, 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 that's uh, uh, another one of our rules that we, we're not really uh, following very close. And see, at no time can the number of individuals participating from outside the park uh, visitors. And uh, here uh, we, we define guests, but uh, I, I don't know that we define visitors. I don't know if those terms are synonymous or not. Uh, but uh, 
It seems like there is some difference there, but at no time can the number of individuals participating from outside the park visitors exceed those who wish to participate as property owners, renters, and their guests. To me, that means that if you have, well, if we're talking about this one individual club, if they have uh, a, uh, uh, say, two owners, renters who are participating, and maybe three outside visitors participating, then at least one or two uh, property owners in Trailer States is entitled to also participate in that event. And it says, uh, well, that, that please refer to rules and regulations part A and part B there, but I have no comment on that. But uh, looking on over in part C, uh, rules govern an admission to the facilities. And it seems like there's a contradiction in the, uh, section one and section two. Admission to and the use of all trailer states, park and recreation districts. Uh, common recreation facility is restricted to those displaying current district identification cards. Then section two, it says admission to trailer states, park and recreation function is restricted to those displaying current district identification cards. And to me, that seems to conflict some of the areas that we previously mentioned and kind of limited based on uh, uh, an owner being present. Here it indicates to me that everyone must uh, present these cards there. And uh, I guess the, the bottom line in, uh, in here is uh, the issue has been raised mainly by pickleball. And uh, uh, I, as, as I see it and as I have been told, uh, there are some violation of our rules there by not allowing uh, at certain times, our park and recreation, uh, our, our residents of our park and recreation district from participating in those events when they should be entitled to. That's one area. And then, then also the the reserving uh, of the uh, the facility uh, more than what our rules and regulations allow. That's based on the information that's been fed to me by the uh, pickleball club. That's all I have. <clears throat> okay. Um, a lot of the concerns that were brought up were related to the budget, and I want to apologize for all of the turmoil that some of the exhibits that I prepared um, have caused in the community. What I did was I put together some scenarios for all of us to consider. None of them may be put into practice. It may be a total variation of what I put that we move forward with. It was just a discussion document about ways that we can bring money into the park so that we can limit the amount of increase that we do to our assessments. Um, the suggestion that we have a completely separate set of books for the marina so we know exactly what the income is for that and exactly what the expenses are associated with that I think is a great idea. Right now, it, there, there's ways that I can do that with different accounts. So I can sort of do a historical look back of what the marina has brought in for income and what the expenses are. So I think that's um, a view that I definitely want to put together for the board to look at. Um, when I made the decision to increase the marina slip rentals, it was just arbitrary. It was, if we're going to charge $1,400 for somebody who's a non-resident, definitely 100% a resident should pay less. Right now the residents are paying 25% of what a non-resident is paying. And I just felt like that was a, a, a little bit extreme, and that's my personal opinion, that if you charge a resident half what you're going to charge a non-resident, you're still getting a fantastic benefit compared to what a non-resident is paying. But that was just my number that I came up with, one that we're going to be talking a lot about here based on what we've heard from all of you. The storage lot, I just looked at what people would pay if they had to take their boat trailer or their RV anyplace else besides right here in their backyard. Um, even if you went right down here, it's firing on Florida Boulevard, you're gonna pay $70 a month. All right, that's, if I can do the quick math, $840 a year is what you're going to pay to take it down to Florida Boulevard. 
Um, so definitely, we have the space here. We pay a lease to Manatee County for that space in order to be able to provide it to you. Um, we need to make sure we're collecting enough in revenue for the use of that storage to offset the cost of the lease at a minimum um, and hopefully make a little bit more. So I think, you know, we need to go back and look at that and see if we're making enough to cover the lease. Um, and that goes with everything that we do here in the park. We need to understand what we're paying for and if, if the income from the recreational activities and the expenses, what is the ratio we want it to be? And we need to decide that. Um, one of the things I've brought up many times over is the laundromat. And, you know, the fact that we lose money every month on the laundromat, and I know that's a sore subject for a lot of people, but I think we need to make sure that we're covering the costs of the laundromat. So if we need to increase the amount it's going to cost you to do a load of laundry, to dry a load of laundry, so that when we take in the income, it offsets the expenses, then maybe that's all we need to do. Um, so I think we've got a lot of work to do as far as balancing the budget goes. Um, the one thing that's going to be clear, though, even if we do all of those things, I do not think we can afford to continue functioning without dipping into our reserve at the current $1,100 a year. I just don't see it happening. This spectrum bill is a large amount of our budget. Um, I tried to do quick math without a calculator, so take it for what it is on my scratchings, but it's about $40 per month per homeowner. You cannot get one cable box for $40 a month, never mind two in internet. So to, we can't get out of the contract anyway. But if we did get out of the contract, break the not renew the contract, every homeowner in this park is going to pay over a hundred and probably hundred and twenty five hundred and fifty dollars a month for what they're getting now for forty dollars a month. Um, so I don't I just think we need to remember that we're saving a lot of money on that. Um, benefits. A lot of discussion about employee benefits. Um, when I first became treasurer, I started looking at payroll. It's a big piece of our expense. It deserved a lot of attention. Um, what I found was that although at budget meetings and, and um, approval of budgets, we had put a percentage increase in there for the employees, there were some occasions where they never got that increase. We budgeted for it, but we never physically gave them the increase. So I look back at what each individual in employee of the park was making for an hourly rate, I went out into the marketplace and said to do that very same job right here in Bradenton, how much would they make an hour to do that job? And I put together a lot of information that I shared with the board about what they could get if they left here for an hourly rate and what they would get if they left here for benefits. And then I adjusted the salary for that. So if they could get $10 in the marketplace with an 80-20 medical plan, then we shouldn't pay them, I'm just going to use numbers here, $8 because we're giving them a full medical plan. So what I put in place for a fee structure, a salary structure for the employees, <laughs> takes into consideration that they have 100% medical benefits. So they're getting a lower hourly rate than what they can get in the marketplace. But in exchange for that, they're getting medical benefits. So I, I think that's something that a lot of people don't know. Um, but I wanted to make sure I clarified that. They're not getting a rate equal to or better than what they can get and 100% medical. That is not happening. Um, I guess hopefully have kind of touched on some of the budget and the expense items that people brought up. We're going to be discussing this at the work workshop. Who knows what scenario we'll move forward with for the next discussion, but I'm sorry if I created panic by some of my numbers. They were just a place to start for the board as we consider the challenge we have of taking care of the expenses um, to just keep the lights on. The, the first thing I, I'd like to address is the uh, uh, 
people reserving rooms more than more than they're allowed more than twice. Anybody who I, I will say that anybody who's reserving a room more than twice has completed a PP39 um, and identified themselves as a, a club group or organization, and then goes from there. The rest of my comments are from last our last meeting. And I want to thank everybody for giving me the time to properly uh, respond to last week's uh, comments. Here goes. Uh, Sandra Torgna uh, asked several questions. She asked if clubs can exclude residents. The short answer is no with some explanations, which I will address as I answer Clayton's questions. Can outsiders use our facilities? Yes, as a guest of a resident. Additionally, some events, such as couples dance class and others, allow for non-residents to be included at a cost or higher cost than residents. Are clubs required to charge dues? No. How often can a guest come? That enumeration thought was beat up a few years ago with the final results being as many times as a resident invites them. She also asked if Shuffleful pays to use the facility for tournaments. No. And neither does Bocce Horseshoe or any of our other clubs, groups, or organizations that may have an event. It should be noted that the health fair does pay for their event. Carol Durain asked about PP, how PPs are handled, which several trustees answered at our last meeting. She did ask if exceptions are allowed. Since I've been on the board, the answer is no. Other than accommodating memorials with, le with less than a week's notice, if we make an exception for one, then we have to for anyone, and the whole purpose of the PP goes down the tubes. Joe Carey asked why the property was purchased in October 2012 without a referendum, and then the trustees bought it back for $10. First, the statement about the $10 is just ludicrous. Why would trustees buy it back if we already owned it? And who would accept payment of $10 for that property? This is just silly gossip. Now, the, the without a referendum statement. There was a phone referendum done. I remember my call. The caller wouldn't discuss anything other than the scripted question, something to the effect of would I support the purchase of the property. The only acceptable answers were yes or no, period. I checked. Two attempts were made to contact each and every property owner uh, at the phone number on record in the office. A sufficient number of yes responses were received to, re to proceed with the purchase. <coughs> now on to Clayton Fisher, asked about being excluded from a club group or organization. While Mike recommended completing, completing a complaint form, I want to expand on, it, on this. Yes, the short answer is complaint form. As I had previously and privately discussed with Clayton before the last meeting, um, I scheduled the groups. There may be two groups that do similar things. The example I used was poker. There are two separate poker groups. They each play on their requested day and time, and neither begrudges the other their space and time. I don't know why there are two groups, but for an analogy, let's rock with the one that plays deuces wild and the other does not. One who plays nothing wild can tell a prospective player they have to play by that group's rules, and that group should not be disrupted by a player constantly carrying on that deuces should be wild. I heard that analogy, I heard that that analogy I spoke with Clayton about was flawed, and I have recently learned this exact type of question has been posed to the attorney and we are waiting on his reply. I work closely with the large group to carve out maximum amount of time I can for them. That's the best I can do. I absolutely refuse to tell the Nothing Wild Poker group that they must allow a player to join their group and try to change or disrupt their game. I would encourage any poker player to join a like-minded poker group and enjoy their retirement. While the new computer controlled mixture for the sound system is in and the cabinet for it has been built by the maintenance department, the large hall will not be available for installation until after the end of season. This will allow for addressing any installation issues before the new system is required for multiple back-to-back -back events. Thank you. Uh, on the marina itself, the boat ramp uh, is not going to be open during this contract period. I will go ahead with the secretary on the negotiation of the new contract to see if they want to open that uh, ramp. If we do open it, we have some other legal issues of becoming a public ramp, which we are not. And then, of course, it's going to go right back to the leasee of the uh, property if it's going to have a impact on their insurance and uh, liability cost. So I will look into that for you. 
Uh, the second thing, there's about 25 non-resident slips that are being rented right now. The way the policy was written two years ago is if a non-resident held the slip, there was yeah, there would be a waiting list for our residents to take over that slip once they vacated that slip. I can't go in and just pick the non-residents out to give the uh, residents of the parking priority on that. One thing I want to caution is we are paying uh, what was the percentage, 25% of mm -hmm. what I heard. The non-residents are paying about 1700 a year, right? Don't have the figures, but anyway, 1700 <coughs> If I lose, no, I said that wrong. If the park loses all of the non-residents, the rates <coughs> will go up. I, I, you just can't uh, have it in, well, this year's money, 426, 432 a year. Uh, and then have somebody at 1700 leave and then have that drop back down to 432. The money's got to be made up in there somewhere. And then, Gordon? Okay, I, I think um, the marina rates and rental rates, and then we'll talk more about the budget. I don't have anything else to add at, that at this point. But the comment about the uh, fiscal year. Um, Apparently that's not commonly known, but state law changed, enforced the change to the uh, October, September fiscal year instead of the January, December that's in our charter. And the fact that it's still in our charter is because that's the way it was when the charter was uh, initially adopted. That will uh, hopefully be changed if we open the charter and make some changes to it. The charter, I believe, also establishes that the fee will be the same for every improved lot. And that can't be changed unless the charter uh, changes that. Charters change to allow something different. I think that's all I have to comment on. Um, on the letter for the candidates that, have, that have appeared here today, um, all who filed a letter of intent we did receive one resume this morning, which is a pub will be a public record. You can obtain it in the office if you wish a copy of it. Same with the letters of intent. Uh, correct, some people have said just the marina. We charge the post office, we have, a, pardon me, we have a contract with the post office, church, and Dick's Marina down there. And in their rent, we increase it 5% a year. So there is no freebies here in this park as it relates to the post office, church, marina, uh, picks. So there is a 5% increase there every year. Employees on health insurance. While we give the employees health insurance, their spouses and children they pay for as part of their wages, a wage agreement with them. Cable is under contract. In that contract, we have a 5% increase. I think the contract goes for another five years. It was a total of five years, five so years. I think we've got a couple left. Yeah, so we can't break that contract, and <clears throat> I don't know where you can get a better deal than what we're getting. Uh, county land. We char they charge us an increase on their or not? For the lease yeah. property, no. So that's a flat fee every year we pay to them. Um, as Mary indicated, we don't have the doubling of fees, it was just a proposal in the workshop for a discussion with the board. Um, noise ordinance, there is no noise ordinance in the county. There is a nuisance ordinance, ordinance. And that's according to the deputy sheriff I talked to at the health fair. And people can complain and say there's a nuisance, basically noise. Um, but they will not come, well they will come, they will investigate but they will give us leeway till 10 p.m. to uh, have music in the hall. Um, I refer you to Florida State Law 2002-361. Everybody talks about the charter. While the charter is a nice item, it is really state law that governs. And in there, as Gordon indicated, it says an improved lot or proof thing. So that means a home. If it doesn't have a home on it and has a garage, we can't assess it. 
That's a flaw in state law that we need to have corrected. We have been having discussions about changing state law to take that into consideration because a lot of you, most of you that came up here were right to some degree that it isn't fair that if you have a single unit home, you're being assessed the same fee as those who have a multiple lot assessment. Um, We are not a homeowners association. We do not have a homeowners association fee. We tax you. It is a tax. <laughs> and as such, it's deductible. A homeowners fee would not be deductible. Um, as to the tent property, we're going to have a discussion about that later tonight. The property was bought with the intent of preventing other people from putting something into that property, such as a strip mall, strip bar. Uh, that's another storage unit, and keep in mind the access to that place is a public road. So, with that in mind, that ends my comments on that. Moving on, uh, do I have a motion to approve the board minute meetings of January 20th? A motion. Pete makes the motion. Second by Dwayne. Discussion. Board. On um, <coughs> under the informational reports, uh, I'm just a second. I'm sorry, I grabbed the wrong document, so I'm not keeping up with you. All right, I got it. Informational reports, item number seven. Uh, the hey, chair, slow down. I'm not there yet. Okay. Sorry. Okay, go ahead. Uh, the, uh, Mike also responded to my question of when an appointment to fill the vacant trustee position would occur by stating sometime in March. So how do you want it fixed? I, I have to I have to have a how you want it fixed. Well, what what's the error? I know it's missing, but what do you need to add it to make it fix to fix it? I don't know if you should say his name or he, but he responded to Gordon's question of when an appointment to fill vacant trustee positions would occur by stating sometime in March. All right, hang on a second, Gordon. Mike responded to Gordon's question about filling vacant positions by stating something in March. It will be added to the end of Mike's statement. Mike, that with the heat. That yes. it? Yes. Okay. All right. Anything? Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah, another correction on the on the final page under the reports of clubs and organizations under Donnie's comments. All right, hang on just a second. Let me get there. Last page. Okay, I'm there. Uh, under the veterans' breakfast, I'm sorry, I'm about the fifth line down. <coughs> okay, yes, I got it. It was. Uh, she said it was sponsored by American Legion, Bayshore Post 317, and the Beautification Committee, and the Trailer Estates Veterans Club. Sorry, I thought that was assumed. Okay, um, so I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fix that sentence to say she detailed the veterans breakfast on March 7, 2020, sponsored by American Legion, Bayshore Post 317, the Veterans Club, TE Veterans Club, sorry, TE Veterans Club and the Beautification Committee. Does that work? Yes. Okay, I'll take care of that. Thank you. Any other corrections? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed? Mm -hmm. Motion passes. I need approval for minutes of the Board of Trustees workshop of January 6th, no, sorry, January 20th. 
February 3rd. I'm sorry, February 3rd. February 3rd, 2020. Motion. I'll make a motion. Mary makes a motion to accept the second. I'll second. Wayne seconds it. Discussion. Seeing on all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion to <coughs> Right under. Report from the treasurer. Um, as of today, the checking account balance is sixty-seven thousand eight hundred and twenty-nine dollars and sixty-four cents. The money market balance is one million two hundred and eighty-five thousand nine hundred and twenty-four dollars and thirty-two cents. Okay. Can I make the motion? Yes. I'll make the motion. Do I have a second. Second. All those in favor of signify by saying aye. Aye. Group bills. I have four. I have a Blaylock Walters bill um, for a um, issue with Michigan for $19. $19 even? $19 even. All set. Second. Discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor of approving $19 signified by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. I have a bill for $95 for an issue regarding Miller. I have a motion to pay the bill. I'll motion. Sandy, vote a second. Well, I'm making a motion. Sandy, vote a second. Okay. Thank you. All those in favor of signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. I make a motion we pay the bill of $93 for the good case. Do I have a second? I'll second. And Wayne seconds it. All discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Motion that we pay a bill for $57 for a um, issue on Washington Street. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Do I have a second? Discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor of signify by saying aye. 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 All those motion carries. Uh, moving on to <coughs> attorney, there's trustees' comments and just informational. And informational. Uh, let's start with Gord. Informational. Okay. Um, I haven't been in the office much this week. I've been, been sick for the last weeks, so I'm, I'm a bit behind on getting letters out to people for violations. There's an awful lot of violations around the park for boats improperly parked, trash on the curb and in the driveway is not being disposed of properly, as well as there's, uh, even though there hasn't been much rain, there's some boat lawns that definitely need mowing. So if you haven't got the letter, doesn't mean you should wait to, to do it, but you will be getting letters. Uh, to fix these problems. Uh, also, um, one of my goals of being on the board was to try and have some consistency in following our rules and procedures and all of that. And I, I know that it, it seems uh, unnecessary sometimes, but I'm a believer that we should follow our own rules and procedures. And I will continue to attempt to see that we, uh, we continue to do that. Also on the, on the bulletin boards, I noticed that there seems to be an awful lot of what to me is commercial advertising that's appearing on the, the bulletin boards. And I'm not sure how often that's being checked to be taken down. But it, it seems like it's up, a lot of it's up there for an extended period of time before it's being removed, if it's even being removed. So Can you give us an example? Well, I, I don't have pictures of what there are, but there's a, there's a number of things promoting activities outside the park that are uh, Sponsored by not not sponsored by an organization within the park. But anything that's a commercial nature is. When I, when I was at Fort Gordon, we used to kind of just snip a picture of it, 
and email it to me and I can address it immediately. Because yes, yes. I, th I think we're do I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing and I'm hearing, what I'm hearing you say is that I'm not, then I need to know where, where you think I'm not. Yeah, I'm not sure how often you're able and if you doing that. Thank you. Anything else? That's all that. Thank you. I was hoping that all those people that were here earlier would have stayed. Uh, yes, from last year, uh, we started that uh, traffic study or the calming study. Uh, I don't know if people have seen it, but on American and Canada, there are the two wires that are going across the road. They dropped those in about a week ago. Uh, what I didn't know is one of those counts the number of cars that go by, and the second one determines the speed. I can't tell anybody to do 60 miles an hour down here, but the more speeders we have, the better chance we're going to get stop signs. <laughs> With that said, uh, I don't know how long those wires are going to be there. Uh, I have talked to the county about that, and it's going to end, I'm going to say, within probably the next week. Uh, the second item is just a reminder that the paving job will start down at the South Marina parking lots. February 24th through the 26th. So if you're going to be using your boat or on that street there of Pennsylvania, uh, please try to avoid that. I, I want that job to get started on Monday morning early and I want it done by Wednesday evening. So when the uh, fire department holds their uh, auxiliary garage stuff, what is it called? Garage sale. Garage sale, that they have access to all that parking. So please, uh, I have made arrangements with the marina that we can keep the equipment off of the street and back in where the storage is for them. So <coughs> we'll have access up and down. I have not gone door to door and knocked. I'm just hoping that it's been on 732 for about the last three weeks. So just be aware of that. And, Try to avoid the area. Uh, I've got nothing. I, I did that all my in my. Um, my main focus right now is the budget. Um, still continuing to work with the auditors, so we're still in the process of auditing our books for the last fiscal year. Um, I have asset management I need to do, which is very time consuming, where I have to go around the park and identify every single asset we have, make sure we still have it, and that it's still in use, and anything we've disposed of is off the report, and anything we purchase is on the report. That's an annual event that I need to do uh, to pay personal property tax on those, so I'll be working on that, which is, again, very time consuming. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. We come closer to relate to that. Okay. We don't pay, we just have to report the fact we have the assets. We pay personal property taxes. We do. Not very much. Okay. It's minimal. Okay. And when you say all the assets, that includes anything that any club has? Every asset. Every piece of equipment in the wood shop, every... Pickleball, every sh TV, shuffleboard, you everything. Name it, it belongs to the park. It belongs to the park and it's Not in our asset club. inventory, correct. And I need to account for it, that it's still here, it's still in use, um, it hasn't disappeared. Pete? Yeah. Um, coffee break uh, Saturday, we, uh, we sold 161 tickets, but then we had several other people who came. Uh, you didn't necessarily have to buy a ticket to come to the auction, so they, they came and didn't participate with the printer and the fruit cup and so forth. And uh, the auction uh, brought in uh, $5,800 uh, for the uh, Southeast Guide Dog. With all of this conversation today, it'd be nice to have that in the budget. But, uh, it was, uh, it, the purpose was to sponsor the Southeast Guide Dog. And then uh, our next potluck will be uh, uh, tomorrow night in uh, Large Hall. If you want a good like, home cooked meal, and, some good fellowship, uh, come out and join us. Just bring your own favorite dish and uh, your own uh, serving place of it. Sandy? Okay, um, our last show time that we had 
with Mary Ellen Hooper was well attended and well received. So many people are attending Showtime this year. I really appreciate it because that really helps us to uh, fund our uh, programs that we have. And uh, Saturday night dances are well attended. I didn't have enough tables set up last week for them, so we had to set up more tables, and I appreciate everybody coming out. Our next one will be February 22nd with um, Patsy and Magellan. And our next showtime will be February 27th, and we're going to have uh, Johnny Counterfeit. So that should be interesting. Health and welfare. Our health fair was really well attended. Lots of free food and prizes, and people enjoyed. <clears throat> we, one time we can get together and talk about our aches and pains, and somebody really cares. <laughs> and uh, the uh, same. I appreciate everybody who keeps me informed of hospitalization and deaths, so that I can keep a list of that for the year. <laughs> That's the two that I have. Um, as many of you might know, the, there was a fire in the park on Saturday night, early Sunday morning, uh, and, and it left the place completely demolished. Uh, the people that are renting there are from Canada, uh, and they could use assistance. We ate. The bingo uh, last night raised $400 over a little over four hundred dollars to help them out, uh, and I understand the firehouse plans open and let them pick up things that they may need to continue to be down here. Uh, they're totally it was totally devastating. There's nothing left in the building whatsoever, and fortunately, uh, nobody died, and no additional damage was done to any other property uh, other than that one. Trailers do go up like tender boxes. There's no way of getting around that. So be careful about those things. As it relates to commercial advertising, I have been taking down, anytime I've seen commercial advertising, what I consider to be commercial advertising, off the bulletin boards. Uh, the one I have a little problem with is the one that says open to uh, outside the park. Uh, it's sometimes hard to distinguish if a religion is a commercial advertisement or not left those up. But again, it's one of those things where you, you, as soon as you see one, you walk away and about 10 minutes later there's another 10 there and it's a continuous battle on that. Uh, we'll go on to reports from standing committees. Uh, can we have a beautification committee? Thank you. Sandy Stevens, 1814 Minnesota Avenue, representing the Beautification Committee of Trailer Park. I just want to make note that our meeting on the 26th will be starting at 1.30, okay? Um, I have to thank all the BC Beautification Committee members who helped for our pizza party that we had on Friday night. Uh, it was a great success. People enjoyed the pizza. It was served in a timely manner. Um, and believe it or not, we had a profit of $550 on the Roth Road. It was basically an inform, a, a meeting to inform the people about the history of trailer estates, which Sandy Spence did a wonderful presentation. She keeps getting calls for all kinds of stuff now. Um, and um, I did the uh, history of the beautification committee. And it was informative, and people enjoyed a night out on Valentine's Day. I want to put a special thank you to Sandy Simonich for getting, uh, ordering and going getting 55 pizzas. Thank you for all your support. Okay. New business, update duties of maintenance trustees, PP1E, Wayne. It's traffic oh, problem. Sorry. Let's see, let's see the one. Which one are we doing? The first one. Maintenance. PP1E. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm in the wrong people. I'm just going to 
Um, all right. Uh, I make a motion to update duties and maintenance trustee PC wanting to add past previously assigned the public relations trustee as discussed in the February 3rd, 2020 workshop. Oh, yeah. Do we have a second? A second. Discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next one, update duties of public relations trustees PP1F. I make, mo I make a motion to update duties of public relations trustee PP1F to remove task assigned to maintenance trustee as discussed in the February 3rd, 2020 workshop. Second. Mr. Gordon, second. Discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Update complaint form slash procedure. Dalton. I make a motion to update complaint form slash procedure PP32 to remove verbiage from responsibilities as discussed in the February 3rd, 2020 workshop. Well, second. Story the second says. Discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those motion carries. Reports of clubs and organizations. Seeing none, we have a motion to adjourn. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I, I do. Yeah, I do. Sorry. That's all right. Still, still shuffling paper. Um, just, just a reminder that we're that the Christmas dinner committee is going to be having a meeting on March 4th at uh, 10 a.m. here in the small hall um, to make out our plans on how we're going to handle stuff over the summer so that we make sure Christmas dinner is the wonderful success that uh, Gail and Joan made it in the past. Um, we're looking for volunteers. Please attend that meeting. We'd love to have you. And we're having Christmas dinner. I'm sorry, Lori, what's that meeting? March 4th. Okay. At 10 a.m. And I do know that we're slightly, there might be a meeting that might not quite be done, so we'll, okay. we'll be here. Okay. Do I have a motion to adjourn? I make a motion. So we need to move to a second. Oh, so we need to a second. All in favor, see if I can say aye. Aye. Uh, opposed? Aye. Let's take a. Adjourned at what time? 12 26. Thank you. Let's take a 15 minute break. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we all have to move on to the next one. Six. Was it you got it on six? It's six. You said it was six. I won't answer that question. I wasn't gonna, I'm glad I noticed it because I wasn't going to show up until seven. seven. <laughs> yeah. It's on our workshop. Yeah. 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 Six will be like to be out by nine or ten. You have little faith. Get double time for today. Uh, yes, they're paying me time and a half. That's Mary, interesting. What? You have little faith. Yeah, I know. That's six. I'm glad you caught that. I'm glad I caught that. My brain is right. You ready? Yeah, please. <coughs> I do have a question it has really nothing to do with this. I don't have to do an invocation and pledge leases again tonight. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. I don't mind doing it. I have one written out there for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me just it. Okay. Are you ready, guys? Uh, I'd like to call to order the uh, workshop with the Board of Trustees for February 17th at 1242. Uh, are there Is any everybody's issues? microphone on? I'm sorry. Is everybody's mic on? Uh, mine? Yep. Mine is now, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. I apologize. Can we do it again? Yeah. Good. Uh, any additions to the workshop? Keep in mind, we're going to be having another meeting at 6 o'clock tonight. I'm just warning you in advance. Anything you ask add to it, you can delay this a little bit longer. But go ahead. Do we need to discuss anything about the next steps as far as appointment of a trustee? Um, that's up to, actually it's up to me. If you want a discussion, I'm glad we have one, but. I mean, I don't, I don't know what, just to establish the next 
time frame. I'll put down a discussion of appointment of trustee. Anything else? And we would like to have the health fair contract made between the, the between the the sheep gives us money for the rent rental of the home and there's no contract. <clears throat> Okay, so you're, asking, you're saying an exhibitor for the health fair wants a contract yes. next time. Seven and number eight, I want Mary at the end um, because hers is going to be the longest. If that's okay with everybody. So it'll be seven will now become nine, eight will now become seven, and nine will become eight. If that's okay with everybody. Yep. Okay. Um, first, or, first one on the agenda is update disaster preparedness plan PP20. Uh, I went through and uh, from the changes that we had for the public relations uh, PDs went back to the disaster plan and basically just changed those uh, comments or the lines where it says the public relation north uh, switched that directly over to the maintenance is what we discussed at last meeting um, Every board that was discussed as being a public relations uh, function is now switched over to the public relations north. No, maintenance. 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 maintenance, thank you. Now, uh, in addition to that every year, the Board of Trustees is to review the uh, PP20 for the disaster preparedness. Uh, I think this one here gives pretty much notice on just what's in there. Well, it doesn't have the rest of the PP20, does it? All we did was we, we gave the two pages okay, that, yeah, that so. changed, and then the discussion that you're going to be updating PP20 because yeah. it was like a 17 or 18 page document. 18 page. So next meeting I will bring the actual PP20 after these changes are made to it, um, and then review it before the April meeting. So let me see if I have this correct. The next meeting, you're going to bring the change, change in the document we're doing today, and all the other documents that go with the PP20. Correct, and I'll do two things. One, make the the, the motion to approve the uh, changes from public relations in order to maintenance, as well as review the entire PP20. Will that be a board meeting or another board, workshop? Board meeting. Board meeting. So if, if anybody has any changes that you see that's necessary in PP20, um, kind of down and down and get them to me so I can get them identified or we can do it in the board meeting, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter to me. You want me to do that PP38 time? Okay. Thank you. Ow, ow, ow. Okay. Okay. You're up next. Discussion of calendar conflict. Um, there's no longer calendar conflict so I withdraw. Uh, next one is the telephone director. <laughs> um, I'm making a recommendation that we not take the time, money, and create a telephone directory this year. We have a large supply of them. We're so late into the season, we can't finalize it until we get the trustees set, seated. By the time they're seated, the season will be over with. Um, but I would like to uh, have the board approve my telling TJ that mid-January next year to rock with getting the, the a new telephone directory started. Makes perfect sense. That work with everybody? That, that would uh, be to include the newly elected trustees right. that would be taking office as of January. Yeah. Yes. Sound good? Sounds good to me. I have no problem with it. Okay. Anybody have any problem with that? No. 
right off the here. Uh, rules and regulations. As I was going through the rules and regulations, I noticed that the there is a lack of rules and rules for all these different organizations. Pickleball cert. I'm not saying we don't have them. Okay, that's not the question. They're not part of the rules and regulations as it appears in on our website. And I've listed all the ones I knew of that don't show up. Uh, I, 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 oh, sorry, were you done? Yeah, I'm done. No problem. I'm sorry. I have, I personally have a real problem with my, me, hosting, um, let's just say, uh, who, who's missing, Cert, Cert's, Cert's plan, their organization <coughs> and our rules and regulations because I don't rule and regulate Cert. They're a club. I understand they're a club. But I don't, I don't, when they decide they're going to add a number C that says now we're going to wear white shoes on our left foot, I don't want to have to change my rules and regulations to accommodate that. Well, I'm not saying do it every year, do it every week. I'm talking once a year. There should be an update on the different rules and regulations so residents of the park know what the rules and regulations are for that club. So if they want to participate in that club, they have a fair understanding of what that club is and how it operates. Uh, for example, I'll give you uh, Baji. They give you exactly in detail how to play the game right. and how the rules are, are run. <clears throat> and people that pay the taxes in this park have a reasonable expectation that that be available to them. Okay. Might we consider a separate document rules and regulations for what the board is controlling separate from the rules and regulations for the clubs and that would mean subtracting bingo from the rules and regulations and moving it over to the organization's rules and regulations taking out bocce and putting it over there and then expecting the other clubs to do this to give their i think the way we handle the Okay, two parts. First, with regards to the clubs, they on an annual basis have to tell us when, who their presidents are or their officers are, and they make dates and reservations with you. When they make those dates and reservations, the thing you should be asking them is, I want a copy of your rules and regulations, your rules and how you're going to operate to be part of the record. I'm not asking you to retype them. You don't have to. You can just use what they provide us provided it's typed. You can make a format, you can tell me I want it typed, I want it in this format. Okay. Please provide it to us. And if you don't, you can't be a club. If you want to, if you want to be part of the park and you want to operate as part of the park and you want the residents to participate, you have an obligation as a club to provide us with information so that residents know what they can do. And that's the example of the two pickleball clubs. I mean, I can't give you a better example than the two pickleball clubs. Right. No, what separates the two? You know, uh, I don't think there's, other than the skill level, you could not prevent me if I wanted to join the advanced pickleball club, and I'm willing to pay their dues, that they cannot prevent me from being there. They may not like me, they may not let me participate, but they can't stop me from being there. I thought we were raving on a, on a ruling from Bernie. Well, I mean, I'm just saying, because it, it's been argued for, Four years, both sides of that fence, okay, and this is where we're at today, and it's still being argued. And I heard it was being turned over to Barnaby, so yeah, my brain is saying <laughs> my stress level is going down to here until Barnaby. Barnaby's been giving me a ruin. I just didn't want to go through it today because I didn't want to spend another hour arguing about with people afterwards. But I did get a ruin from him, and basically says, um, first of all, Park shouldn't get involved in club activities. Okay. Clubs should work out their differences. Okay, that makes some sense. And park can regulate the use of the park property. Okay. Clubs can charge dues. They can assess skill levels for determining. What they can't do is refuse membership for a resident in the park. So if you're willing to pay their dues and you want to sit there on the sidelines and twiddle your thumbs, you can do that. 
something illegal and, and then join it. Uh, I don't know why I, I would do that. But he says if they can't argue, if they can't straighten out their differences, he says the park can step in and make set it up so that they can be regulated and they may not like the decision we reach. For example, we could say to the pickleball clubs, you can only use the hall three days a week, as any other organization can use the activities. Bocce, horseshoes, everybody else has got three days a week. They get multiple uses. <coughs> you know, is that fair to the rest of the residents in the park? Now, I grant you the hall ain't being used, but maybe one reason why the hall isn't being used is because pickleball is using all the time. I don't know. I mean, I'm not saying they do, but that's you know, a possibility. And I know how this is going to be sound on the TV, but that's too bad. I guess I'm going to suck a little bit. Sorry, Mike. But getting back to the rules and regulations, I think there's a need to have it in writing so that they can talk among themselves rather than us sitting here trying to figure out what their rules are for. I think uh, maybe the rules and regulations is a misnomer a little bit, but I see a difference between those clubs and organizations that operate basically facilities. The, Probably the wood shop is the most significant in that safety is a bigger concern there probably than any place else. And the strict rules of, of what should be done in the wood shop compared to something like the yacht club or the computer club that really doesn't do anything except hold meetings. And the rules and regulations, uh, the computer club that I'm most familiar with, we have bylaws and they're submitted with our our whole our club form mm -hmm. yeah. and that's the governing document it's the only document that exists um, I don't think the park should include that as part of the official park policies and regulations why because it's as if the park is responsible for that club it, it is the I park is responsible for that club I think the park is only responsible for determining if a club has the right to use the facilities they're no. not responsible for the club. Yes. We are if you, 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 you talk to our attorney, he will tell you okay. that anything takes place in this park, if they fall on slip or they're meeting at your meeting, we're responsible for that under our insurance. Okay. We're responsible for every meeting that's conducted in the park. Now we do we don't regulate every meeting, the possibility of every meeting, but we are responsible. So does that mean the park is responsible for approving the rules and regulations of those clubs? Could be if we wanted to go that far. I don't think I we do. I eat the bylaws. Yeah, I thought the attorney said the park shouldn't get involved in club activities. Well, I'm trying not to, but I do think we need to have some kind of format that people can read, okay. so they're not coming to us. What if, what if we What if we came up with something? <coughs> move them out of the activities list that I got. That's got I don't know, sixty activities on it. Move any of those out of. Rules and regulation, set up a separate section for them. Let's just, for the for an analogy, because I'm still trying to bake this in my head, PPs, only we're going to call them... Um, clubs and organizations. Uh, COGs, clubs, groups, and organizations, whatever. Okay? So we're going to call them, call them that. And then, so then you're going to have a COG1, which is bingo, and you're going to have a, a COG2, which is computer club. And, so then when the computer club changes their stuff, I only have to fix one document, not a 45-page document. I can live with that. Um, and we can, I can work on building this, and I can start, like I did last year, telling everybody I, don't, I do not accept a recurring reservation without a copy of bylaws, articles of incorporation, or for less formal groups, uh, PP39. All right. That was the rule we set last year. Can we live with that? So this year, yeah. that's what's set, but that doesn't include the rules. It just says, what's the purpose of euchre? To get together and play euchre. It doesn't say what the rules are. It doesn't say that you, you know, that you can stick the dealer or, or we only play this many hands around and then you change tables. They're not a club, they're an organization. More, no, we're a club. You're a club, okay. Yeah, we're informal. So my, I think the, the problem that we're having here back to this pickleball club is that it's not clear to anybody how to become a member. It's not, it just says advanced play, but what do you qualify as advanced play? The reservation says it. And I know, I know I asked, oh, I asked um, how one becomes a member 
of this club and you have to go to one of their scheduled times and you have to play pickleball and they'll watch you to see if you're at the skill level that they're looking for and they will determine based on like an audition whether or not you're at the level that they're looking for and, and you're allowed to join the group. And I, I get that. I, I think if you want to have a group where you play at a certain skill level, I understand it. But it doesn't say anywhere in any of these documents that that's the process for becoming a member. So I think it's very confusing to a lot of people. If, if they want to join and they're saying, well, you've got to come and show us if you've got the skill level we're looking for. The actual reservation on the system, so when you go Tuesday or Thursday, yeah. whatever their days are, I think they're Tuesday and Thursday. Yeah. And you look at that time slot, it says drill for skill, advanced play, and then in parentheses it says 3.5 and above. So it says it on every all right and every there, day in the calendar. I don't play pickleball, so I don't know what three point five. I don't know. Is. I don't know either. And is there is there an independent way to determine if a player is at that level? And that's where what Mike's asking for would could be beneficial in enumerating what what would constitute the three point five. Right. I don't have to enumerate it. They have to give it to me, right? And I put it out there as a because I think CLG that would solve all the problems with Seven. this. If mm -hmm. I, if I as a resident knew what 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 skill level three point feet equated to, and I feel I'm at that skill level, um, but I think the problem is is that you can feel you're at a four point if that's even such a thing, and you can go play, and and they have the right to say. No, and that's the problem. I have. That's, that's, yeah, because then it might not be skill so much as personality. Are you my friend or not? Right. Here's what it has in, in the rules and regulations. Shuffleboard <coughs> section one. Hours of use of shuffleboard court shall be 7:30 a.m. to 9 p.m. Section two. They go on. The rules that use the shuffleboard court are as follows. Right. Go on. Trailer states bocce game rules. They're right in here. I know that. There's a few you know. in there that no. need to be removed, but the shuffle. I'll shuffle four times. I'm not, I'm not done. Pool and jazz society. Yep. That's in here. You go down. Wood shop. Okay, they got every rule in here. No smoking. Display current district identification card. Kitchen policy. You go down and explain it. I'm saying that every club should have, I don't care how you want to, where you want to put it, but there should be a document that tells everybody in the park, when they look up online, Here's what's expected of you if you're going to participate in this activity. Right. And not to have that is a disservice to the rest of the residents in this park. I agree. All right. Not, not to be just argumentative, but those are talking about facilities and activities, not necessarily just the club. Because it's the shuffle board, let me look back the shuffle board court can be used by people other than club members. Let's, let's backtrack. Is that okay, true? Let's backtrack. True, you, but pickleball you can. Okay, they 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 want you to play at a certain level. One one club does. The other club kind of is open, but even they have got a little bit of some rules in there. And if it's a club, even if it's a computer club, they meet when they meet on the third Monday or fourth Monday of the month. What are they there for? To discuss current issues that relate to computer usage and how to overcome those problems in the computer. In problem. I'm not saying it has to be real detailed, but detailed enough so that the average person can look up and say, oh, they meet on Wednesdays. Oh, okay, I've got time now. I can go over there. You know, I can join. That's the thing I'm trying to get at. Well, if we don't maintain a current list of activities, we have we a current list. No, we, we, do. we do not have a current list of activities. The one that's on the website is almost two years old. It gets updated What's every missing? April. It, it has not been updated, updated since April of 2018. It'll be updated in April of this year. The Video Computer Club has been uh, gone for over a year and it has not been updated. The Veterans Club has not been added to it. Oh, we should have that. I, I'm not disagreeing, I'm just saying, I'm, then I look at, I don't care if you want to put it under organizations and clubs as a PP, so that when you want to change it, it's interchangeable. But there should be some place where we have this so that people can say, hey, here's what it takes to play that, with that club. 
I mean, I'd go to him one step further and say, have the officers listed so that people could call the officers instead of calling us to find out what's going on. But I'm not going to go that far. <coughs> now, does drill for steel have to have their own nets and balls? No. Since our pickleball no. group is? No. They can use the facilities and equipment of the park. I think we've got to make this real simple. Okay. If you're a club or organization in this park, you have to be open to all residents. It can participate. You can't exclude residents from participating. Period. End of story. If you're going to use our facilities, if, you, I agree with that. And if you're if you're going to have a, a club or organization that's going to be limited, you need to find some other place to do it. But if you're going to use our facilities, it has to be open to every park resident. If or you can't use our facilities. And apparently our PP42 form has that reference in there. The yeah. References means, but PP39 for the informal groups yeah. has nothing. Yeah. I think we just make a blanket statement. If you're a club or organization in, in Trailer States Park and Recreation District using any facilities of or the district equipment. or equipment of the district. You have to be open to all residents. You cannot exclude anybody from participation. And if you want a club or organization that's going to be private, then you need to find someplace else to hold your meetings or your activities, or you need to rent the hall. I know we don't rent the hall, but maybe we need to start thinking about that as an income generator. If you want to have your private club, where you can, you know, you can determine who is allowed to participate, and you want to use our facilities, you've got to pay. Right into residents only. The resident has to reserve it. The resident, resident has, has, to, has to pay. Has to pay. Okay. And if they want to collect five dollars from all of their participants to pay for it, fine. But they have to reserve it. They have to pay if it's going to be a private club. And you say put that where? I think that's just going to be a general oh, statement. That would be, no, that would be in the rules and regulations. The rules and regulations under clubs and organizations. Oh, that, that's that's consistent with the, the wording in PP42. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. PP42 needs to be cleaned up. Yeah. Yeah. Dramatically. Yeah. Uh, PP39 needs to be cleaned up. More specifics. What? PP39 has to have this added to it. Yeah. 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 It says this, this form is used for informal yeah. clubs and organizations that do not have articles of incorporations bylaws elected. This form is submitted in lieu of, it must be completed, and, and then something along there that says it, it cannot exclude any resident from participation. Okay. Is that be, that? Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Should we be requiring a signature on these forms? Why? Uh, well, I've got the contact name, but the, they the, don't. the signature's on the reservation. Yeah. This is just telling us about the club. But that's they only, told us the primaries. But that's yeah. only for a club that's actually trying to reserve facilities. Correct. Many clubs don't reserve facilities. Name a club that doesn't reserve facilities. On a regular basis, the vet, vet's club does not. Okay. But they're not, why, why, why then are they recognized as a club? If they're, what's the purpose of them being a club? If they're not going to have rose, if they're not going to use the hall, what was the whole purpose of? Identifying them as a well, club in the board. The, they don't need to necessarily uh, uh, meet in the uh, park district's facilities, but it gives them the option to on a uh, as needed basis. Okay. But even, okay, but we know for example that they're going to be here Memorial Day. We know they're going to be here Veterans Day. So they are going to be using facilities outside. They are going to be using facilities inside. No. It just kind of covers you so if you ever need to, you're able to. If, if you fill out this PP39, then if you want to have a meeting here versus someplace yeah. else, yeah. you're allowed to. I, I'm not arguing against yeah. it. I'm arguing that there should be a signature on the form. Yeah. Or what form? The, the, form the PP39. PP39. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. So, I, so then if, if we're going to say that you have to have your membership open, Whoever signed this then is agreeing to that. I agree. I, 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 uh, I have I agree. an objection to that. I think that makes perfect yeah. sense. And, uh, yeah, I have a, I, you know, By signing this form, you're agreeing you agree to, to the following. following yeah. this so and, maybe and even. Or the above statement. To read yeah. the re rules and regulations, too. Yes. Yeah. 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 And if it's yeah. not on 42, something like that. You know, I, um, I'm applying for residency at a 55 and older mobile home park. 
in Maine because I've just got a place on the contract there. I have to sign something before I move in that says I've read the rules and regulations and I've read the bylaws and I understand them and I agree to follow them before I can live there. So the fact that we're saying that this is the, what the purpose of this is and that it has to be open to every resident and that they have to sign it saying they've read it, they acknowledge it, they accept that. And I they agree to it. And it, I don't yeah. think that's a bad idea yeah. at all. And to follow the example of like Veterans Day and that, that's really not sponsored by the Vets Club. They participate in it. It's yeah. a beautification committee. Ah, you're right. You're right. Sponsored. Right. Yeah. You're yeah. right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, so I mean, I'm going to follow up with rewriting PP39 I'll and take care of that. 42. I'll take care of it. Yeah, I think that's. I'll, br I'll bring it back in a workshop mm -hmm. for you guys to take a look at. <laughs> my thought process on reading it up and then you guys can read up my thought process and then we'll have a, I have a good one for the next for the next board meeting perfect so I'll I'll, I'll snag that and own it but I won't be able to touch it until probably Thursday um, enough on that one yeah okay development of pickleball courts uh, I'm looking at the parking lot South of Bay, north, east, west of Park, the other <coughs> side of the horseshoe court. Mm -hmm. Okay. Of developing mm -hmm. that as pickleball courts. Getting them out of the hall, putting them outside where they should be. Um, the only problem is money. Mm -hmm. It's about twenty to twenty-five thousand dollars a court. What about what about um, Julie Hope's thought process of how the bocce courts got built? Can we possibly Piggyback on what she was saying about how the wood shop did the framework for it and somebody else did. Now, we might be paying for the cement truck that comes <coughs> and pours it and smooths it out, but the framing work and, and the, the uh, flagging, you know, so getting it all, maybe we've got people here in the park that can do it and save us some dollars. I think the like biggest expense budget. is going to be the paving. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm yeah. sure. But we might have people who are. And yeah. fencing. Is there a different yeah. type of surface that needs to go over the concrete? Yeah, I see. Yeah. Those, yeah. Things, I don't, those yeah. things I don't know. Yeah, yeah. this, uh, oh, last couple of meetings I started mentioning pickleball, kind of basic bound, groundwork, because my intention was to start putting together some figures to present to the board. And uh, when I started doing that, I found out that uh, uh, someone, a couple people ahead of me, uh, a couple people had already contacted the same contractors that I had contacted, and uh, they wouldn't talk to me. And uh, the same people had already contacted uh, Tripart, uh, <coughs> who I was following up with to get information. And they have it. This is the president of the uh, pickleball club now for the park has been working on this too. And I visited Tripart's uh, a little while back to look at what they have. They have really a nice facility. And I didn't get to talk with the people who were in charge of it at that time, but I think we could get a lot of information and learn a lot from them about prices. And I know that, uh, and I didn't, I talked to the president of the, <coughs> or the people at Tripar a couple of days ago, but since they had already talked to uh, the president of the Pickleball Club, I told them I get the information. <coughs> so I, I, they could put together uh, some conversation and, yeah, and what they need. That would be my suggestion to them. I was, I was uh, uh, waiting for a meeting with him now to, to discuss those things. How, how much of that? How much of that parking lot are you thinking of using? Every I mean, bit that isn't being used currently. Every bit. So the overflow part. The we open up. We open up the park. The county says we can use for overflow, and, and when, until they say no, and if it's five years from now and they say no. We say, well, you've let us use it for five years. Where have you been? And so that yeah. that's already covered because we. I, I thought there was some holdbacks with we had to have it paved or shelved or something. So there will be a cost involved in getting that prepared. For I don't plan to shelve it. I just plan to open it up, and use it. There's no requirement. Not that I'm aware. Of. Okay. okay. Until the county says no, we're going to use it. Wouldn't be the first thing I didn't remember right? Mm -hmm. uh, in the Today, lease, court. But the lease, as I read it, it talks about limits on you can't dig into the ground. Right. right. That was the biggest mm -hmm. condition, other than mm -hmm. that. So, yeah. I'm not for using that. 
we had to submit like a diagram mm -hmm. and uh, information on what each section was going to be used for. Mm -hmm. And this section, it shows that it's to be used for cars, parking of cars. Yeah. Yeah. The other was yeah. RV storage and so forth. Yeah. So, well, and so we there's a diagram that's attached to that lease that showed the parking in there. Yeah. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. So right. I think that's one way of getting this thing moving. Maybe you're talking football court saying, you know, come up with a plan, present us a plan. We can talk about it, we can work at it, and right. we can look at it. Are we going to have time enough to get go, no. conversations for this budget cycle? Oh, no. Unless okay. we give something else up, there's no money. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. I'm just, I'm just yeah. asking, I'm trying to figure out. All right. Okay. So you're going to follow up on that, Pete? I'll follow up with the pickleball president and put something together. I'll follow up with both of them, even though we have our disagreements with the other. Right. Okay. We have a disagreement with both of them. Yeah. Talk to both of them. Okay. So at least they can't say we didn't look at them objectively. Okay. Um, just more things I've added to our list of things that we should look at for legislation. Any vacant lot, current or in the future, shall be developed with housing within 18 months of the date of legislation or after the said sale of said property. I'm tired of seeing vacant lots that we're not getting revenue from. You know. So if I buy a vacant lot, I have to put a home on it within 18 months of buying it. Yeah. Or I have to sell it. If, if I if I already own it, I have to put a house on it within 18 months yep. of this going into in the law. Into law. Yeah. And then if I purchase it after that, I've got 18 months to put a home on it. Yeah. That's, and what's the penalty if they don't? Well, <laughs> we then have the ability to tell them to sell it. Because well, they're not assess a, it's assessment. Charge them an assessment well, if there's no yeah. home on it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they, that would be the yeah. other thing. <laughs> yeah. Personally, yeah. I don't have a problem with the vacant lot. I have a problem with not paying the assessment. I, I like the mm -hmm. idea that if you have 18 months from the date of purchase to put a home on it. If there's no home on it in 18 months, you're going to be assessed the assessment whether there's right. a home there or not mm -hmm. until there is one. And right. Of course, that violates our current. Well, if we change, well, so we we'll change, change the whole package. Right. The, the whole package is yeah. trying to change it. Right. <laughs> you know, and then the other one: no lot or combination of lot shall be used for anything other than housing. No garage shall be allowed on any property in the park. My understanding, that was already the rule, that they can only build a garage on a lot that was combined into one single lot. So there was a residence That's what they've on done. It. They've taken two lots, gone to, the, gone to the county, and put it as one lot, and said, now I can put a garage on it. I, I, I think what they did is something different, Mike. I think I have my lot with my home on it. I bought a vacant lot next to me, right, right. and I put a garage on it. Now it's not considered a dwelling, no. so I don't have to pay the assessment. But no. you combined they didn't do no, that. No, they no. No. I, I said they didn't they, combine. They did combine. Almost every one of these ones that have garages, they've combined a lot into one. Yes. Right. But we do have a situation in the park on the north side where there's two separate single yes. lots owned by the same person mm -hmm. and they have a garage on that lot. And they're not paying an assessment because it's not a dwelling. Yes. But it's a separate lot from the tax. Right. No, concern. On on seventeen, I would just add the word future after after any and before property in that very last little bit, just so that it says any future property in the park, because I don't think we want to create a situation where somebody comes in and tries to say, well, now you passed this law, you've got to tear down the garages, because okay. that's not what we're are, saying. No. Are there? pre-existing ones are the grandfather the yeah. other. Right. So it's yeah. going to be from yeah. this day yes. on. Right. right. That's why I said, that's why I said they have the word future. Yeah. Well, to play so devil's that's... advocate with this though, mm -hmm. if it's if this, this could be interpreted to say I can't build a garage on my lot. I've got a house there. That's and if you have a lot saying, that's big, big, big enough, enough so that you can meet the easement yeah. requirements to put a garage, I don't see how we can. You don't have to, there's no garage shall be allowed. You'd have to have a one and a half or double lot, right. and we're but going to fix the charges so that right. if the assessment is five hundred dollars for a single, then it's a thousand dollars for a double, or seven fifty yeah. for a one and a half. And if you want to put a garage on there to get your one and a half, but I, mean, but I, but I agree with what Elton was saying is this is saying no garage. So if I do have two lots like I have tear my house down and put a new Jacobs on there and I still have room to put a garage, you're going to limit me. No. 
Mm. You've got two lots. Well, that's what this says. Yeah. You've, got two, you've got two lots. You said it when you said you've got two lots. Yeah. We're trying to stop it. someone from using the other lot to create a garage, which stops us from having an assessment on it. But are we try are stopping people from combining lots? No. No. I think we cover it when we say that going forward in this new charter, that your assessments will be based on the size of your lot. So a single lot owner like myself would pay one. Somebody who's got one and a half lots will pay a different assessment. One that's got a double lot will pay an even larger assessment. If you want to put a garage on there when you took two lots and combined it together, go for it. I this, say this you're going to pay you more in your assessment. This language says you can't put that garage. That's what I think we need to change. I yeah, think okay. it needs to say if you want to purchase multiple lots so that you can have a garage. We're going to, in the new legislation, we're going to let you do that, but you're not going to pay the same thing a single lot payer pays anymore. Those days are gone. Well, there's two different issues. One is the assessment value, and the yeah. other is what you can put on it. And okay, if, so it needs to be reworked. If you right. have a double lot, yeah. we're, we want to allow, I believe, we want to allow a garage and a house. Correct. Only one dwelling, and if you want to add a garage, go for it, okay. but only one dwelling. But, but it's got to all be on one lot. And, how we assess it is then a different set of I, I think we're saying the same yeah. thing. I, if it's, I buy the home, the, if, if the home next it. to me gets pulled off and it's a vacant lot and I want to buy it and combine the two into one, and I want to put a garage on that new space that I've just purchased, I, I, I should be able to do that. And as far as my assessment goes, my assessment will be based on the fact that I have a double lot now and not a single lot, which is not the case today. But I should no. be able to put a garage on there if I want to. Well, I can't put another dwelling. Well, I can put a garage. Yes, what about, what about if, if the house across the street from me is gone, mm -hmm. is vacant lot, mm -hmm. can I buy the house, the property across the street from me and put a garage? No, it has to be a dwelling. It has to be a dwelling. Because I can only put a garage if it's touching my property. If you've combined two residence. lots into one yeah. and made them one lot, okay. did you right. combine them? Thank I'm, you. I'm, I'm wrapping my head around yeah. it. I don't know that it's come up, but can we combine, like I'm on Ohio, yeah. if the lot immediately behind me on Indiana became mm -hmm. available and I bought that, can I combine those So maybe lots? you need to say if adjacent lots are, com if, which would qualify for that, if adjacent lots are combined, <coughs> then you, but you are in two, you them. can still only have one dwelling right. on that but combined I mean, lot. I don't know if anybody's combined one on two different streets. I don't know if they have either, but if so they I don't did. That's allowed. And I, I don't think you can because it's mm -hmm. on, on just Kansas streets here and Texas is on the other side. Mm -hmm. They have two different mailing addresses. Um, it would have to be an adjacent lot yeah. right together is when I think the county will allow That it. might be a county mm -hmm. restriction. But you can cross yeah. over the... <laughs> okay. It's the same yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Because it's just easement and trails and stuff. Yeah. Good. Let's not go with that problem. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Right. Right. When you get that figured out, do it <laughs> for the minutes, please. Um, I need to go back. I apologize for not catching this sooner. If we go back to uh, page <coughs> number six, um, approving the budget from April with something like August 1st, that's to me a bad idea because we don't have any quorum. No. We really need to get it done by April before we. Well, it's a state questions. law, it has to be done by April. State. No, it isn't state law. It isn't? No. I checked. Well, oh, it's just our charter. It's just our charter. It. It. Okay. Well, wait a second. Is our charter state law? Come on, you even beat that into my head. <laughs> well, Come on. It, it, it is, it, it except there's it. another state law that gives it to August. Right. Okay, that's the same state law that says you have to start your budget in October. Okay. Right. I agree. We don't meet that time of year, but it would give us some flexibility rather than getting jammed up on April 1st, as we often do, when we need further discussion beyond April 1st. So nothing says we're going to wait till August 1st. No. We're not stupid. No. We know that we're not here August 1st. Right. Okay. But you put I've some got, other data to me. I mean, I've got, I've got, I can mark with that. I'm good. That, I'm good. That was my, right. one of the problems I was facing was. Then. Go ahead. Go ahead. The no. problem you were facing was you know, we always get jammed up towards the end of the month, and we actually sometimes need another meeting. And we can't have another meeting because we have to approve by April first. All right. And that's part of the problem I saw, and I don't know if August first means something, but you know we're not here, and I agree. Well, Maybe, 
August 1st is the assessor's stuff. Right. right. The assessor's deadline. Mm -hmm. So, so there, I'm assuming that. That's what it comes Okay, up. that's what it's yeah. winking with. Mm -hmm. The other question I had was on number nine. Incorporate the rules and regulations and charter into state law. Let's scrub rules and regulations because we change those too frequently. Too frequently. Okay. Um, okay. And, and it, it's like I don't want to be locked in with what we've got on PP42 right now. Well, our charter says that we will have rules right. and regulations that dictate how we right. operate. That's so it, it says that we have them, right. but so we don't let's not to, make it part of so the we law. We don't need to be more explicit. Right. Okay. 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 Can I back up just sure. a minute? Sure. I'm trying to look for an opening to get in there. No, sorry. <laughs> I apologize. Sorry about that. I go back to the combination of lots. We were referred, talking about we're, we're combining two lots into one, right. and that's one lot. And then we're talking about our assessment being on a lot and a half. If we're combining it into one, we can't call it a lot and a half, we can't call it one. So to uh, establish the assessment, and not we need to come with a middle angle rather than say a lot and a half because we're combining them into one now and it's only one lot. Yeah, I, I, I've got an idea on that. Go ahead. I think technically the, we're combining them into one parcel. I think that's the language the county uses. Mm -hmm. The lot is the lot. I think my uh, deed on my property says lot 27 and half of lot 26 except for the five feet exactly on the east side mm -hmm. of it so i think we're probably incorrect when we're saying combining lots we're combining lots into a parcel okay. but we can still assess based on lot well and i think our charter currently says we assess based on parcel correct and i think really the simplistic way to change it is to assess it based on Lot instead of parcel. I haven't researched yeah, that because we go partial, we're cutting it down to one partial. Yeah, we're right. still losing. Right, that's right. So right. That, that's one way of taxing. There's another way of taxing, and that's to do what everybody else does use a mill rate, use property and land as value, you set, determine an assessment based on a mill rate, <coughs> and use that as your premise for taxing. Now, when we established the park, it wasn't possible, but since the county already does do that and they have the formulas of the, you know the things available i'm sure you sit down and say you know okay, we've got a test that we want to tax on a mill rate which then taxes you on the basis of value not on you, you know, mm -hmm. land mm -hmm. would we would we as a board control the mill rate Yes. Yes. Each year, each yes. year, what we do. Yes. We'd have to hire a company to come in and determine the value, the taxable that value, <laughs> just like any other property well, taxes. We wouldn't use the taxable value from the county because every home has use. a taxable value on it. Each piece of property has a value. I mean, I'm not saying it's great. Land and <laughs> yeah. and yeah. property or housing, they determine the value. They tax you on that value, both yeah. on both. I'll and and my that gets you, you know, to this whole issue of vacant lots because then you eliminate. You wouldn't need them to develop the lot if you didn't want to, because you could say, well, they're going to be taxed on the, on a mill rate anyways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the only thing that does that does is oh God, I forget it. I love my neighbor, so I'm not nothing personal. But people on either side of me are gone. And I take their, I purchase their vacant lots. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I'm one and three. And I don't plan on doing anything with those. We still have to assess for those vacant lots, even though at the would. appraiser's office they have no value. Yes, they do. Well, they'll pay tax value. of land. Yeah. Very, very yeah. small yeah. amount of value. So the mill rate doesn't yeah. work in that world. There still has to be a, 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 a some sort of a something assessed for. Parcel lot, call it whatever, parcel lot. Our lot's probably more accurate. Yeah. Lot. And then um, vacant lots, you know, lots that are not developed pay whatever the but assessment. The way it goes, they shall pay the lowest rate of a home and lot. You can go that route. You can automatically. You can develop language. I'm not saying, yeah. keep in mind, we don't yeah. know if legislators will pass any of this. Yeah, you know? right. <laughs> um, 
we, you could add language that would say that any property that's just strictly land will be assessed on the lowest uh, rate assessed. Well, I think we need to a separate assessment. Like Mary yeah. said, yeah. a single lot pays this, a, a lot and a half would pay this, and a double lot pays that. And a vacant and lot then pays our rate, else. our mill rate might be less because of that. So the improved properties, I don't know. Well, we wouldn't have both of the assessment at no. Oh, you wouldn't have both. Yeah. You got to have both. Oh, no, no. 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 but I think, it's fair. I, I think it's fair to say if you purchase a vacant lot, that if it's not developed within 18 months of the date of purchase or, or 18 months of when this legislation goes in for those that are vacant today, then you have to start paying an assessment of X until it's developed. And it won't be the full assessment that I pay because I have a home on mine. So if I'm gonna pay $1,000 for my single lot, then a vacant lot pays 500. I'm just using that as an example. Yeah. I pay a thousand because I'm a single. A lot and a half is going to pay fifteen hundred, and a double lot is going to pay two thousand. That when we determine how much money we need to run the, the <coughs> shop here, mm -hmm. we will know how many single one and a half doubles, triples, whatever we have, and we can calculate what that means per person in order to get what we need for revenue to do what we need to do. Well, I agree with what you're saying, but the purpose of what I think Mike's trying to do is you've got 18 months to put a house on it. Mm -hmm. So if you haven't got a house on it in 18 months, I'm not going to give you a break to five or a right. half. You're going to get charged the full assessment right. regardless. Okay, you, I'm fine with that. You had your right. chance. Yeah, right. You didn't have you, you All know, right. Like That's I fine. Just, <clears throat> That's fine. Like we have the same thing. potential of combining vacant lots. I know there's yeah. one location, I'm not sure if they combine the lots or not, but it's two or three lots that are vacant on the north end of New Jersey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they've been vacant ever since 2015, and I know. Yeah. And, uh, that, and I don't know if that's uh, <laughs> still one lot or three lots. But uh, either way, they pay, under this idea, they pay for the size of those three lots. And it's apparent that there's no immediate interest in development. Yeah, developing. I tried to find out who bought, who owned it so I could buy it and put a house on it. Yeah. I didn't even get a hold of them. You couldn't, oh. Are you, I mean, I could find out, but they you wouldn't respond. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. okay. Uh, I'll work on the one. Okay, discussion of the appointment of trustees. Uh, here's my thinking. I really don't want to appoint anybody. I don't have a, an election to fill the vacancies until the first meeting in April. Only because to try to get somebody up to speed on this budget is going to be a nightmare. We're going to end up getting the same questions we're asking over and over again because they don't know what's going on or what has been going on. I know it puts a burden on everybody. I get that. I just don't think it's fair to them or to, to us to try to get them up to speed, because we can't talk to them. I mean, once we put them on the board, they're under the same sunshine laws we're under. And uh, that's why I have a little problem trying to fill them any sooner than April, the first meeting in April, uh, because I don't know how else to get them up to speed. I mean, they can read the documents, they can watch the TV, but that really doesn't give them a feel as to what we've been discussing all the way along. I know it puts a burden on you, and I know it puts a burden on you. I, I get that. Um, but I don't know what else to do other than appoint them next, the last meeting in um, March. You know, uh, you know, we can do that, but that's the meeting you're going to have the uh, public hearing. Public hearing. And are we going to have another meeting after that? To, no, not in March. Not in March. That's the last meeting in March. We have to approve the, approve the, the budget mm -hmm. at that point. I guess you could put them on at the end of it, at the very end, after you've had the discussion, you've approved the budget. We've ratified the budget. And then, then put them on. Them and swear them in. Swear them in. You have an election, swear them in, because that's what you're going to have is an election. You're each going to get an opportunity to vote, a public vote on each person. Okay, we'll do them one at a time. Uh, whoever gets the majority gets on the board. 
just that and, and I think we need to remember that we don't have to fill both vacancies. If there's only one person of those four that we think is a good candidate for the board, we have the right to just take one of those and, and, and make the decision to carry that vacancy into the election. There's none of those fill. four. Uh, and if none. there's none of those right. four that we think are a good candidate, we have the right to say it, it stays vacant until the election and they have to fill out their election paperwork, get their signatures, come to candidates night, and get voted on by the public. Um, we have that ability um, to make those decisions. And you have, you have no responsibility to justify your vote? No. It's a democracy. You can vote any way you wish. I just, I don't want to bring somebody on to try to explain this whole budget process to them and then have us in knots because they're not caught up to speed. I mean, you're eating, you're living this, you're, you're, you're here. You know, they had interest, the four candidates that were here uh, should be out in the audience listening to our discussion. Um, that was the question I had. They all left. Mm -hmm. What do you do to prepare for the budget? <laughs> Does anybody have a just go ahead go on. I, I don't disagree with your thought on, on delaying until the first of April. However, the process of how we would select, uh, you, you mentioned possibly doing them one by one. Mm -hmm. But somehow we've got to pick who do we vote on first. Alphabetically. Well, well all right. The first thing we have to do is we have to determine as a board how many positions are we going to fill out of the out of the bank of four? Well, we only have two vacancies. Huh? I understand that, but if I think that I that only one of those individuals is suitable to bring on the board, and the other three are not, how or none? How do I make that known by so that we as a board can determine? By voting no, by voting on each candidate that came before us. Keep in mind, but okay. keep in mind that you've got four candidates. We could co collectively, individually, as a group, vote no on all of them. That's sending a note, sending a message to the community that we, the board, did not feel comfortable with any of these candidates to fill the vacancies. And we're going to look at the repercussions from that. Keep in mind, there are repercussions by doing that. I, I have a thought. There's seven of us. Mm -hmm. So, and we have two vacancies. Mm -hmm. That each person puts the name of one or two people that they think would be good candidates or to not. fill those vacancies or not one two or none and then you have to eat the person has to have gotten a minimum of four votes in order to fill the position that's that's the ticket that's exactly what we need we need to not hit we need to have four the trust so, has to have a minimum of four to be seated in order to so my, i think the easier way to get some of the heat off the other trustees is the way i could present it is I wish to place a nomination X, Y, or Z. Okay, one at a time. Do I have a second? And if nobody seconds it, then, you, then that, that's that done. sends the motion that. You know, or if it's seconded, it. in, then has no, to still have four votes. Yeah, four yeah, four yeah it takes a majority. It takes a majority. Mm -hmm. yeah, majority. Four to seat anyone. So this is all. Yes, yes. It, well be, it, it, has to be. it has to be public. You know, I should write it down. I have to read okay. it publicly. Yeah. So don't it's a moral board. So, so, so we're going to have a minimum of four to seat anyone, and then what were you saying? <laughs> uh, there's a motion. Okay. I'll make, make, I can't make the motion. I, I just keep going back to him. Make it because someone else has got to say it. So, motion to accept A. A. Right. Perspective A. We have to get a second. Right. And then we have And then. Because the does the motion have to be for the specific position? No, that's my point. That's, that's, he appoints them. Well, so it's a, no, I know you're asking a different question. I understand the question. Is it a one-year term or a two-year right, term? Are we right, filling? Right. 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 Um, that's a good question. I don't have. I really don't have an answer. I don't think it makes a difference. I think we, the board, can make a determination uh, at that point whether or not we want it to be, a, depending who we put on. I'm not going to vote to put somebody on the board and say I'll take you, but you only get a year. Either I want, either I think you're a good yeah, candidate right. to be a board member of this board or not. Assigned. And I'm not going to say I'll take you because you're a year, and then you got to run for your election. I, I want you, or I don't want you. So and to be a part of this. Team. After one motion is made, would we vote on that one motion? So whoever makes the motion gets control of. 
Well, if Mike makes a motion to I put can't. one, or if I make the motion to put one of them on, a. right, and you second it, and then we, then we need to vote. Then we need to vote. All those in no. favor? No, mm -hmm. we've got to find out who the four we're going to be voting on, because I might like C, but nobody else likes C, and therefore C doesn't get a second and isn't in the running, but that's who I would. Uh, now I, I think, think I would figure out who the four, who of the four we're voting on, and then make our picks. You know, if there's if there's two candidates, and I say I only want, oh, well, I don't know. That's you've got four candidates. I think you got to yep. vote on all four candidates. Just thinking out loud, and a majority, four votes wins. Yep. I mean, the more you know, complicated you make it, the harder it's going to be to fill it. When, when I applied for the board, I was, I didn't run for election. I was an appointed. I think there were three people that applied for one vacancy. And I think each person put on a card who they wanted of the three. And then... That was because there was one. There was one opening. Now we've got right. two openings. Now. Right. So now I'm, I'm back to... We have two openings. I may not want any of them. I may want one of them for the two openings. I put that person's name on a piece of paper. I know we've got to read the results out loud. That's fine. But then we determine if, if all seven of us put a piece of paper in and one or two or three of those people are on anybody's card, then we just need to worry about the one that is and then say, okay, there's only one person that came forward with four. It's this person. Can I have a vote of, I don't know. If you put, you understand, if you put it on a card, I'm just putting it out. You have to read it. I know you have You have to put Mary Chandler and you have to put A and B, nobody, whatever. Yeah. And I read it. So yeah. it's like, why don't we just ask you? All right. You know, going down the road. But, how many of the is a good question. I think you do, when you put persons on the board, you got to say, we are now filling the position for the one year, the remainder of the one year term, which expires on December 31st, 2020. But I, so you're voting for a position mm -hmm. that you're going to fill, mm -hmm. and that's the first position you're going to fill, mm -hmm. because it's got the closest date. Then you're right. going to say, now the floor is open for nomination or okay. persons to be voted on for the two-year term, the remainder of a two-year term to expire on December 31st, 2021. Okay. That way you didn't know what you're voting on. We all, the public knows what you're voting on. Okay. And it's got the appearance of sunshine. <laughs> right. yeah. that, that appearance it is. Does the motion to uh, elect someone to the board need a second? Could we um, have four, four different motions? And then we vote. And then we vote. <clears throat> okay. Up here, I, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure I follow the logic. Walk me through it a little bit. Okay. Um, without precluding somebody, say, if I nominate candidate A, Wayne nominates candidate B, I don't know. Lori nominates candidate C, and, yeah. and Mary nominates candidate D. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, we said, okay, so when I make the one year position. Okay, when I make, make them, when I make it say the, the we're now we will not entertain a motion to fill the one year position for the trustee, which term will expire on December 31st, 2020. Um, are there any nominations? That's what you are, you're making a right. nomination. Uh, yeah, and you don't, those those are nominations. Those right. are second. Each, anybody of us can make yeah. a nomination. nomination. Okay. And then, so you get up to four nominations. Possibly. Right. Yeah. Or if we only get two, we may not get right. any. Right. Right. You know, you never know. But you're right. Yeah. Then, then, then you say nominations are now closed. We will now vote. Okay, that becomes, okay, who is in favor of candidate A? Who is in favor of candidate B? You take the vote. Yeah. She takes a roll call of every vote. Yeah. That way we've got ourselves right. on record yeah. saying yeah. how we voted. And a minimum of four to seat anybody. Four to seat anybody. That changes is once you put the person so it gets elected to the one return, they almost automatically take your seat. 
Or do you want to hold off and have them take it to the both positions? I think you wait till both positions are full, and then yeah. we have to have Mark here at that meeting yeah. so he can swear them in. So. No, you don't. We can do it. We can do it yeah, without yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Why? So if there's somebody that we want to have on the board. Uh -huh. no, I don't want to do that. No. It doesn't matter. To, to me, it doesn't matter. matter if there are one or two. Either I, either I think they're a good fit for the board and they're going to be the right person or not. And I don't care if but they're that a one might or be two. true for one candidate, but what if there's not a majority that like the second candidate? Then we don't, then we we don't fill that position. Come if, if, if you <laughs> nominate for... for the one year and I don't want that person, I'm not going to vote for that person. Right. That that works for the first vote. But the second vote, the potential for so you're thinking, approvals diminished. Well if you if you nominate somebody for the one year position and you don't get enough votes to seat that person and now it's the now we're going to nominate for the two year from and you put the same one up for the two year, probably not going to pass right. for the no, two but, year. But my scenario is if we're gonna, as a group, we're only going to accept one of them. Would we rather have them in the one-year term or the two-year term? I I can understand what you're saying because you, we're making the assumption we're going to fill both. We may not fill both. That's right? a good point. You may want to fill the two-year term because right. yeah. the one-year yeah. term is going to come up anyway. Yes. Yep. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and and at this point, they're coming on in April, and their yeah. terms up in December, yeah. and we're not yeah. going to meet all summer. I I would expect that we have more. More potential to appoint one of those four. I think you make a good point. With the two year. I think you make a we'll good point. We'll start with the two year. Anybody disagree? No, I like that. Okay. And we're not going to do that until well, the I, April, I the first meeting in my, April, my or the first, uh, first meeting in April. That was my feeling. We're going to have enough to do at the last meeting in March with all of the public hearings. Yes. And, Is everybody going to be there? Yes. I'm planning here till yes. June yes. at the earliest meeting. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, are we going to put this in the writing for future use of how we're going to do the elections? I thought we already had something in place. We, we, we do for so. how we interview candidates and how they express their interest. As far as how we determine when we're going to vote, I think it's a case by case. Okay. The time of year that it is, the number of openings the board, that we have. Right. Yeah. You know, I think it's a case of <coughs> okay. Exhibitors, contract, health fair. Uh, <clears throat> oh, Angela, I call her Angela. Angela. She said that she pays us $400, but there's no contract, and she would like to have a contract. The exhibitors so pay her, and then she pays us. Uh, say that again, Sandy, I'm sorry. The exhibitors pay her, yeah. and she in turn pays us 400 for the rent of the hall. But we invite her to come to the hall because she cannot come, well, she can't say, can I have an event in your hall because we don't lease our hall. So she comes... She requests us through the trustees to have that event. And we can charge her for it, and that's not a problem. But we don't deal directly with her right now. Now, if we did a lease. I think we have to have a contract with her. Let me I work on that. On contracts. Let me work on a contract. Um, I'll see what there is out there for contracts for these types of events. I'll work. Well, I think there should be a contract. It's probably a mess if there never has been one. We've got an outside vendor coming in. We should have a contract. I think she would feel better. She had I, a contract I knowing I that each year. Can we back up a half a step? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure exactly how this operates, but it sounds like we, we have this person that we work with that organizes the health fair, mm -hmm. and that person brings in and works with whoever is participating. And, like and we have the option. The health and welfare trustee can do that themselves. They can send out invitations to all kinds of people and say, we'll give you a table at 100 bucks, and you can come set up your table. After all of these organizations have budgets for this type of thing. And we can run this ourselves and have everybody pay us to come put their thing up. It's a lot of work. 
And I think what's happened in the past is nobody wanted to do the work, so they hired somebody to do it for us. So it's in effect a contract for service. It's not it a piece of the facility. It is. It is because she's collecting a hundred dollars from every. I'm just using an yeah. example. So she's taking in twelve hundred bucks, and we're charging her four hundred. The health fair is the trailer state's activity. It is. And this is just how we implement it. It is. The contract for services we normally would pay for the services, not charge you for her services. We're. I'm just saying. She's. It's a. It's. She's offering to organize it for us. She's collecting money from her vendors to, to participate, and then we're paying her, and then she's making a profit. I understand exactly how that all works. I'm so I don't know what the contract will look like. Yeah. I need to kind of give that some yeah. thought, but I do think there needs to be something in writing because it is an outside company using our facilities. It should be in writing as to who agrees on what. I, I think and, and it's a miss that it hasn't been there, I think. And maybe it did at one point in time, and I'll research that as well. To keep in mind is that that event is a benefit for a large number, it's right up to all residents in the park. It's not that we're leasing it to um, X, y, Joe, Z. Joe resident to mm -hmm. have a, a wedding party in here and he doesn't live in the park. That's not the case at all. This is in something that involves good for all of the residents I in agree. the park. Mm -hmm. And I just want to make sure that's out there mm -hmm. for the world to understand the difference between when we've said no. I got, can I go back one step on this trustee? Do you want me to handle that under new business or in the beginning of the meeting? Where do you think it'd be most appropriate? Or old business? In the April meeting? In the April meeting. At the beginning? Should be in right the right after roll call? Yeah. 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 And then square them in and they become member of the board and participate in the meeting from that point forward. Right. Uh, You're up, Mary. We're on yeah. to the fun yeah. part. Yeah. All right. <laughs> um, in preparation for the discussion today, I sent out some exhibits to all of you. A lot of numbers. Um, I wanted to give them to you as early on as in the process as I could so you'd have time to look at them. Um, the very first exhibit outlines um, what would happen if we did nothing. Okay? And, oh boy. That's not good. Let's just get it. Let's just <laughs> sorry, I and I'm trying to see how this got photocopied on back back. It's <laughs> probably better for me to use my yeah, original yeah, because yeah. That's what I'm doing. this is really difficult. Um, so I'm gonna not look at what was in the agenda. But the ones with the yellow highlighted rooms. Okay. So if we did nothing, um, we would be out of money by 9:30:22. We'd be in the red. Okay, given our ex current expense structure and given just some very basic increases that have been historical increases over the last, I did one, two, three, four, five years plus the one we're living in. Um, and then I went three years out. So you can see we've got to do something. Right. There's no way to avoid it. The only way we can not do something is to cut something. So not do something we're doing today. If we want to keep doing everything we're doing today, we, um, can't do it. we, you know, tell me what you want to cut if you don't want to increase assessments because something's got to cut. So then I started looking at, okay, well, let's kind of incrementally decide what, what we have the ability to change. And one was what we charge um, the facilities that rent from us. So in right now in all of our contracts, as Mike mentioned, it says in the contract that we have the right to increase the rent 5% every year. We don't typically enforce that part of the contract. Um, so if we start enforcing that part of the contract, we would increase the, the uh, marina building uh, rent 5% effective 4-1. We can repeat that. 5% increase, we can increase the post office rent 5% and then repeat that. I am currently not including the church in there. Um, Why? The church. Why? Because they just leased the small office that's at the activity center. 
um, and then they use our facilities for their church services and I guess I heard four hours more. Yeah. You know, for those services. Yeah. And I, 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 they don't have the in, the ability as a business to bring the income in to handle the increases like some of these other ones do. So, if you want to put them on the uh, docket to increase, we can do that. I chose not to. In this scenario, not. In this, and, in, in in this, this scenario, scenario, you don't increase the marina. No, I do. I increase the marina five percent effective four one twenty twenty one, and every year after that. And I increase the post office rent with them on two one twenty one. You're talking about the marina building rental. Correct. I'm talking about the marina. Oh, I haven't gotten there yet. This is just the building that we rent to. Well, that's use. why I'm correcting. I apologize. All right, all right. This. this is facility rental, not slip rental or storage bond rental. Yeah. Um, the laundromat. I have made no adjustment to the laundromat. Right now, we take in fifty percent of the coin income in those machines we do not charge them for the building it's their washers their dryers and whatever the coin intake is they give us 50 percent of that um does anybody here ever use the laundromat i went into the laundromat to try to find out how much it would cost me to do a little laundry and i had a real hard time looking at what was on those washers and dryers to figure out if i wanted to do a wash how much would it cost me i think Okay, I might be wrong. It's a dollar seventy-five for a wash and a dollar seventy-five for a dryer because it's so much per minute. The way you would find out is you'd have to plug because when you plug coins in there, it yeah. tells you. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right about that. Yeah. but I think it's a. I think based on what the little time I spent in there trying to figure it out, I went down the street here to the laundromat out here, and it's three fifty for a wash and three fifty for a dryer. <gasps> Really? So, and there you're not secure. You're out in the middle of a parking lot. It's, you know. So, I almost think if you're going to a secure building that they have secure access to with their fob, it's air conditioned, it's indoor, I don't know why we can't charge them the same thing they pay down the street. What they're getting for a benefit is right in their backyard with security, which they don't get down there, in an air conditioned building that they can sit there and read a book or watch a movie on their iPad while their wash is being done, or leave and come back and feel secure about that because only residents have access to it. So I do not have that in any of these scenarios, but I didn't know if we might want to discuss with the company that operates those increasing the cost to do a wash and a dry, which will increase the revenue coming in. Well, or if we want to leave it alone that they pay half what they pay down the street and they get all the benefits of I think if we up it a little bit, we can at least cover what it costs us for they, lights, water, and gas. They currently get half of the dollar seventy-five. Is that correct? That's correct. So if we increase it to three fifty, they would be getting the dollar seventy-five. Or load, we'd be getting the dollar seventy-five. Load. Correct. I have no problem with that. So it would basically double the income, which would give us enough money to offset what it costs us to keep it: the lights, the water, and the gas bill. Is there any need to give them? 50% of that higher fee. Well, the contract says they get 50% of the coin intake. So Does if we ask them to increase it, we'd have to redo the whole contract. Does it give us the right to raise the rate? I don't know. Or they have control of that. I don't know. They have the control of that. So I didn't have time to reach out to them to see if we wanted to increase the rate so that the 50% was enough to cover our expenses of maintaining it. Could they do that? I did, that's why it's not in any of these scenarios because I don't know if we can do it. But right. if you want me to explore it, I'm uh, happy to do that. If you want to leave it alone, uh, it's, we I'd can do that. I'd be inclined too. to raise the rate, um, but give them an increase, but not necessarily up to the full 50%. If we went to the $3 mm -hmm. and they got a dollar and a quarter of that. Mm -hmm. That's still almost a 50% increase on yep. what they're currently getting. Yep. And that would go a lot farther to make sure we covered our cost. Cool. If that is possible in the contract. I, that's what I said. It's not in any of these scenarios because I didn't have time to investigate it. But if you want me to look into what options are available for us to at least 
break even with that so that we start getting enough coin money coming in to cover our expenses. I think we should definitely look at a break even scenario and whatever that break even scenario is. I support you looking at that. Who, who, who uh, verifies that we're actually getting 50% of the coin or we just taking it on faith? Taking it on faith. Actually, the way the contract is, you correct me if I'm wrong, they're supposed to bring the coins into us and we're supposed to sit down. Yeah, that never, never has occurred. happened. Never, never, never occurred. <clears throat> uh, so I don't know, you know, if we want to go that route. I have no problem with increasing it. I, I see the benefit of it uh, to at least cover our costs. And I think it's, you can explain that people that use it, they may not be happy with us, but we're trying to cover the cost of using the laundromat. I think you should write it in and just, you know, see what you can do there. All right, I'll look, I'll look into that. Am I on the right page here? This little one that says, yes. uh, what is the rent of 365? Which says, which uh, one? if the expiration date is 1-1-2022, uh, says rent 365, then it looks like the income is 5278. Uh, what line are you which, on? Which Serena building? Church Post Office of what? No, just a facility to rent the income. Oh, the total, the total amount coming down. Oh, okay. It was 40. It went down to 39. So we had a loss of 1824. I don't know. And then it went up by 558. This is year over year change. <coughs> so this the is line. the money that was brought in? Correct. Correct. So this is kind of showing that if we increase it in 2021, we'll get another $837, which is a 2% increase. And then if we increase it again, what? that's the additional income that will be brought in as a result of those 5% rate increases, what was just reason, those two. What was the reason for not increasing it to 5% pursuant to the contract? In prior years? Yeah. Well, this year. It, it's not, we usually have to, it has to be written into the contract. It's into the contract. It is, the contract. It is the just contract. written in, though. No, it's always been there. And it's always been there. It's just never been enforced. Gotcha. Okay. I, I think it, it says we have the right to. It doesn't say we will. You know, increasing okay. it. It says we have the ability to, the right to. Okay. Is there a fear that if we do do that, um, they'll close down? I'm asking about the post office and the marina. Uh, there, there is a. Probably there will be a point where the post office will decide if the rent goes up too much that they won't give us the post office anymore and we'll go to, I've got, but I don't know that. I don't know what the threshold is for when they'll say we can't make money operating this. Well, no, it's, it's two different issues. One is the issue of it's not a post office, it's a substation rented by a person right. here in the park. Right. She will make a decision whether or not she wants to continue it. Right. Okay. And if she leaves, they will not continue the post office. So they won't look at somebody else running it? They told me that if we can't make it work with the people are there, they're shutting it down. They're going to put mailboxes at the end of every street. When we were having problems with them at the very beginning of their contract and I was working with the postmaster about the problems we were having, I was basically told, make it work or we're shutting it down. No. It's just not a bad idea. Yeah. Sorry. More space we can use for something. Else. That's right. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, is that those mailboxes at the end, at end of every street, the post office will pay for those, not us. Yeah. I, I don't know that that's a true story. You don't think that's true? Um, the, in conversations I've had with someone who is a former postman, postmaster, I believe that we pay for those. We'll have to pay for the initial. Yeah, and there an initial uh, an initial cost, but that, it doesn't matter. That then it's there, it's done, and, and right. we own them and that sort of stuff. But okay. I'm um, not sure about I, that. I believe that that's what she told okay. me. I'm not sure about that. But okay. Well, maybe we need to have a discussion with the postal uh, manager over there and ask, you know, you know what we'd like to increase your fee. We haven't increased it. Have we? Yeah, we. When was the last time we increased it? At the last renewal of their contract, we did. I think they're the one, because we had just a one year contract. Mm -hmm. And then when we went for, I think, another one year contract, because things were still kind of rocky, mm -hmm. now things seem to be smooth. Um, and I think it's a staffing issue. I think they finally figured out 
how many people they have to have there in order to operate that size of a post office. And I think that's why things have gotten better, is because they're trying to staff appropriately. <coughs> but, um, um. And the same with the Marina. We don't we, have we increased theirs every every year. Or not? I do not believe we have. There were several years we didn't give them any increases, and then we, when I came on board and we renewed it, we increased them. At that point, we just did this year. We just did this year with the new, and now we have. It actually, it went down 2015, 2016, 2017. It went down, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, in 18, we. we Came back and kept them the same in 19. Mm -hmm. Raised them 20 bucks. Oh, yeah. oh no. I find it kind of interesting. We couldn't use that argument with Spectrum. They increase in ours every year by five. It says in the contract, yeah, that's, yeah. that's Game, beginning. Um, I don't understand why some of these weren't along the same lines of logic that if we're being charged 5% on one end, why you're not charging people that are renting from us 5%? If they can't do business here, then we, we, you know, there's always a possibility for some, you know, um, I'm just thinking out loud because my, part of my thinking is also going with, instead of trying to raise the marina fee so high, just built in a 5% increase on the storage and the marina every year. Every year. Right. That way you're not fighting the, the masses and saying, look, we're doing this on a yearly basis. It's built in. And then rounding it off to the nearest dollar, if it's 50 cents or more, raising it up a dollar. If it's 50 cents or less, dropping it down to the lower dollar amount. But that way you're bringing in income. You're not having these discussions and arguments every year about increasing it. Uh, because it's a no-win situation from either side of that <coughs> argument. For those that got the marina spot, they say it's an amenity. Those, those that don't rent from us, that don't have a boat, they say that it's a luxury. You know, and both are right, right now we said the coin is still mm -hmm. uh, I think that the same thing goes with the, with the assessment. I think if we start, once we decide what the baseline is going to be in the future, building in either 3 to 5% increase, at least you're keeping up with inflation to some degree. Uh, because it makes no sense to argue every two years we're going to increase it by this amount. Everybody goes, oh my God, what the hell are you doing to us? Um, well, it'll be a known. <laughs> yeah, it'll be a known. It'll be a known. Yeah. Well, you know, actually, the old storage lot, the original storage lot behind the maintenance building, mm -hmm. right now, those range from $25 to $30 a month is what people are paying for those. And I'm talking about increasing them to $30 a month. I'm not even giving them a 5% increase. No, that is $5. That is a... 20% of it is more. You're right. Yeah, I need my calculator. Um, <laughs> but $5 a month is what I'm increasing that to, and it's still half, less than half <coughs> what they would spend anywhere else. It's currently $30? It's yeah. currently $25, and I'm upping it to $30 a month. Because we didn't touch the storage lot when we, started, when we did the marina a while ago. Maybe we need to bring that storage lot up, and then on a go-forward basis, it's 5% across the board. Two percent. Two percent. Five dollars. Five dollars on twenty-five dollars. On thirty dollars is two percent. Okay, 2%. so we're not even giving them a five percent increase. Um, and we're gonna, uh, I'm and twenty-five at five percent is a dollar twenty. Dollar twenty-five. Five dollars on twenty-five. Oh no, it's going to be twenty percent. Twenty percent. I'm sorry, it was twenty. Yeah, that's what I thought. It was twenty percent. That's right. That's five percent increase is only a dollar twenty-five. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm upping at five dollars a month. Is what I'm right, which which is thirty. Which any place else you go, it's going to be seventy dollars a month or seventy-seven dollars a month. We change sheets in our I'm on. Oh, I'm on. Yes, I'm on thirty. I'm adding from facility mm -hmm. rentals. I said, okay, now let's build on facility right, rentals okay. and add storage lot onto yeah. it. So that's the second scenario. It says, all right, we bake in the facility rentals of five percent per month. Yep. And then we look at our storage lot and we increase those, like I said, the old section from $25 to $30 a month. The new section right here is going from anywhere from $20 to $30 a month up to $35 a month, depending on 
Mm -hmm. why, why are they different prices? Or different what, size. Different what's size. the difference between 200 and 300 and 400 series? The 400 series is the brand new lot here that we lease from the county. The That's, old, they're big, they're they're old numbers of it. They're bigger lots. It's it's, it's okay. a better surface. It's they can handle the big RVs, whereas the old lot behind the maintenance building. Gotcha. Okay. Where does the paved area outside of the gate fall into the schedule? By the, by the, uh, inside the laundry. Yeah, that is the. I think it's the ones that are thirty dollars, and I'm keeping them thirty dollars. The large home, RV motor home, is twelve of them. They're oh, I see. I see it up there. Yeah, the two hundred three hundred series lots. Right. Um, They're currently thirty dollars a month. I left them at thirty dollars a month. I had everybody count thirty dollars a month. My my little brain says that those are primo spots. Mm -hmm. Being that they're paid, mm -hmm. that they ought to be paying a, a premium for having that pay, because they don't have to pay the premium. Mm -hmm. They can park back here in a 400 series lot if they want to pay the $35. Or, you know, those those 12 lots, in my opinion, ought to be a, a, a premium price okay. because they're a premium location. Now, what does that mean? I don't know. Yeah. I just know it. it it ought to be a little bit more than, because other than that, I'd like to park my my, tra my utility trailer in one of those spots if one became available and have easy access where I don't have to worry about stumbling on the grass if they're the same price. I, 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 you know what I mean? I'm all for whatever everybody wants to do. Well, I have a couple of thoughts on that. First, okay. they're, they're smaller. And smaller than the, the, the lots in 400 series. Okay. That. They're outside of the gate, so they're less secure. Yep. And in the interest of full disclosure, I've got one of those paid parking spots. But I paid the same for that as I did for the one I had my 40 foot motorhome in. Mm -hmm. Back in the dirt. And that. Um, but I think, I think you make a good paid. point. I, yes, it is on a paved surface, but it doesn't have the security of being yeah. behind the locked gate. And we got it that I don't know what that's worth. And I think you can only get about a 30 foot, 32 foot unit in there. Hey, I'll any of these rates, I'll run whatever scenarios you guys think is reasonable as far as fees go. If there's no increase, if you don't want to go with any increase, uh, you know, I, I just I just really and truly think that the, the paid primo spots so have a, a, some sort of a premium price to them. That's just me. I'm kind of torn between both arguments. You like to see the ups and downs on both. Uh, I agree with the premium. I agree with Gordon that you're not as wide, you're not as secure. Uh, so if you don't want to use them, you can put, put yours in the 400 series if you want the secure and you want the, the larger lot. Except there's none available. I don't know if they're secure, so sure those are secure either. They're not, I mean, you're almost better secured right yeah, out here yeah. with all the lights, the parking, I'm sorry, the uh, maintenance crew, everything. You're better secured right there than you are out More here. More visibility. And with the homes right there? The, with the homes right there. But the there's no separation between the home and the, right. Because I've watched all the boats back here have their GPS and that <laughs> arc off right here. All 400 series is full? Everything is full. We have no space. We have no space. For, there are gotcha. a waiting list for people to park in storage. Okay. And I have no problem with increasing the rate. Uh, I don't agree with 2083 years. I'm rather than the 21, I brought it down to 20. $20.83 a month never makes any sense to me. Make it $21. Yeah, it we don't, we don't rent it by the month. We got a 30 on. Right, right. Okay. I just equated it by month so oh, we can okay. have comparison to Sorry. what you'd pay if you were if you didn't have it right here in your backyard and you had to go somewhere else but you'd have to pay. Because they charge by the month. The other would, people do. I have no problem increasing the last one, the RV and motor home in large boat, the 12 to $35 to bring it in line with the other ones, I think the premium is probably more in luxury, but then I would also build in in the future a 5% increase. Across the board. Across the board. Yep. So that we're not playing with this two years from now or a year from now, and people say, why are you increasing? Don't we? It's built in. We're building it into the base. From here on in, it's going to be a 5% increase. All right. I think 
at being more honest with people. In the future, can we round that 5% I did, I, to a yeah. million dollar? Yes, yeah. yes. round it up or down. Round it up or down, and if it's yes. over 50 or under 50, yep. one way or the other. Yeah. Is there so, any disagreement with that? Everybody okay with that? Wayne, are you okay with that? Yeah, I'm still okay. <laughs> okay. This room at 6 o'clock is going to come pretty soon. <laughs> so it, right now, if that's all we do, and we stop right here, and we don't touch marina slips, we will, I'm saying we should, increase our assessments from 1100 to 1150 and then another $50 to 1200 and another $50 to 1250 so they got $50 a year. And I, that will get us, that's, that, that is gonna only get us to a very scary fund balance of 100 and, $29,000, which is totally inadequate. Which, which sheet are you looking at? If I look at the facility and storage lot rentals, so now all we've done is increase the rent on our facilities and we've built in a 5% increase per year. We've bumped up the storage lot a little bit and we've built in a 5% increase per year. I've got to build in the 5%. If we increase our assessments $50 a year for the next three years, we will even with those 5% increases, maybe we might get 150 in our fund balance, but that's still very inadequate. Maybe, I realize we have to look into the future, but if we made our decision for what we're doing for the 2021 budget, we're hoping that the, that the laws will be changed mm -hmm. to be more favorable to us in what year? Not till 2022 at the earliest. They won't meet until 2021. They, if they pass the laws, they probably won't make them effective until the January of that following year. So it won't flow through until the so we fiscal year until 2023 at the earliest. At the earliest. At the earliest. At the earliest. Okay. Um, All right. I would like us to, if we're renting or if we're increasing fees for anything, I want to have the kayak storage fees raised as well. Um, I have not. I. I I know it's small money. Every, I, everything across the board, I think that's, that's right, the way. Right, right, right now, so that's not included. One 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 I agree. I agree. And that's, that was a, I forgot about it. And I thought, oh, I forgot about the kayak fees. But this is, the, this is my issue with the kayak fees. They're $30 a year. There's a lot of vacant kayak things out there. And people are paying because it's only $30. I'm not going to give it up because I'll never get it back. Yet we have a whole bunch of people that would like to put their kayaks there and can't because we have no space available. So I think we should increase it to $50. They might think twice about keeping or more. I might just carrying an empty. Is that a year? That's a year. I agree. That's a go, year. I'd rather go $10 a month right off the bat. So to $120 a year from 30? $120 a year. If you really want a kayak, you can rent it for three months. <coughs> if you don't, you can rent it for full year. I mean, you can give so them. So let's give them a break. Let's say ten dollars per month or a hundred dollars a year. To incent them to yeah. save twenty bucks. If I, they do it I for agree with that because the first thing I can see is the the disparity relations is going to get bombed with having kayaks stuck outside of their house. And we already do. And you already do. Well, and. and in their defense, yes, so there's no place for them to put them. Right. And yet we have people who are paying for yes. it and don't even have a kayak in and there. So far all season, there's been those empty spaces. Yeah, yes. right. So yeah, right. they just don't want to give them, it's, it's right. worth the $30 to not give them up because yeah. they're afraid they won't get it back. So if we if we move kayaks to $10 a month mm -hmm. or, or $100 a year, and this is going to be effective 10-1? 10 10-1. 10 okay. Uh, let me build in some money well, for are that. Are all the contracts renewed on the same date? No. No. I, I, I tried to make some adjustments to the contract so that they would come up for renewal during the time when all of us are here. Because I had contracts that were coming up for renewal in July and August. So I did a couple of contracts that were like 18 month contracts or fit, just to get them on a new renewal schedule. Are the storage lot contracts on one schedule? No. no if I, if I ran a storage lot today, I have one year from today. If I rent it tomorrow, it's one year from tomorrow. No, that's not. But the facility rentals. Do we have to wait to implement this until uh, October? Yes, the budget. I think so. Because these are annuals and they've already been paid. The kayak one is an annual one that's already been paid. 
So they're paid up through, well, right. till their renewal. Till their renewal. Yeah. Till yeah. their renewal. So, and then the new fee will go in with the renewal. Yeah, so, you know, it doesn't have to wait till October. Right. Right. My preference would be to implement it as soon as we approve it, mm -hmm. effective on the whoever's next renewal date. Yeah. I agree. No, we're not going to charge right. more for that. I agree. That requires a motion from you next meeting in order to do that. All right. Okay. Next meeting or at the budget? Or the budget? No. No, next if I'm saying, okay, if I'm saying my time. annual renewal is due up on March 5th, yeah. then well, on March 5th I pay this new rate. I've got to get that on the agenda for the next. Gotcha. All right. Do you know what the, what the uh, PP is for, the, for that? Because I'll give you PP paperwork. Oh, oh, I have no idea at the top of my See, we'll put our yeah. heads together on the table. Okay. I think those rates are all in, in yeah. one PP. Yeah, yeah there's one there's yeah. one PP. I just can't think yeah. of the number. Yeah. Right. I want to say 15, but. Okay. So, again, oh. like I was saying, we can increase all those things. We can increase this kayak. That's not going to make anything look a whole lot different here. Yeah. Um, if we do $50 per year, we'll be in the black, but we're not going to be in a healthy black. Well, I got another one. I mean, we heard from Marina. People saying no one increases, and then you know I don't know what you were, what was your intent on that? I don't see anything here that shows. Well, I didn't hear them say don't increase it. I heard them don't say make it a fair price. Yeah. And don't yeah. do fifty percent. Don't double. Don't double. It's it's not quite double. It's a little less than double, but it's um, close. Yeah. So it's close. Them are it's close. Some of them are. Yeah. Let's let's split split it on the, whatever the amount they could have. That's half of what I increased it. Right, what you were planning to increase. Yeah. Okay. Let's yeah. start with that scenario. All right. And then built in five percent thereafter. Okay. And I think our argument can be is look, we increased everything else. We're increasing yours correspondingly. We're not raising it as much as you thought as we were gonna raise it, but we are raising it. Uh, and you know I I was only proposing an increase to residents. I was not proposing an increase to non-residents because when we've done that in the past, <coughs> it's come back to bite us. They've said bye-bye. Well, well and, and, and then we have residents taking over those slips at 30% of, so we lose money. Well, so the other ones, let's not raise theirs, but let's say, we well, yeah, let's raise it 5%. That is not a big increase right. for them. To, to look at, you know, they figure they can do good on the outside. God bless them. I mean, I don't know what else to tell them. I mean, uh, I still think we got the most cheapest rates in the county when it comes to bolt slips. And I know they aren't the most luxurious one, but you're in the Sarasota Bay. You got access to the to the Gulf. Um, <coughs> tell me where you can rent for cheaper. You know. You know you don't have my blessings. I don't know what else to say. We have to find revenue, and you know, it's one or the other. You know, they may come back next to me and shout and holler at me again. It's fine. I got big shoulders. I can handle it. So you're saying raise it 25 percent instead of the 50 percent, and an additional 30 bucks on the storage. Is that what I'm hearing? Mm -hmm. And then five percent every year after yeah. was 25 percent of a uh, 30 footer then i don't have a calculator a 30 footer is 540 dollars now uh -huh. i was increasing it to 1025 which is what for a difference so it's 1025 minus 540. Oh, wow no it's not quite minus what 1025 minus 540. it'd be 540. divide that in half Two hundred and forty two dollars and fifty cents. All right, so that will be um seven hundred and eighty or seven hundred and eighty five yep. instead of ten twenty five. Wait, well, how did you come up with that? I came up with seven hundred and eighty two fifty. And what, what formula was? That is taking the the ten twenty five that I proposed minus the five forty, so it was an increase of four hundred and eighty five dollars. And I said, if I'm only going to go halfway, then I'm only going to increase it 242.50. So 540 plus 242.50 is 782.50 instead of 1025. Why the different 
increase on different lengths. Some you proposed double, by, some you didn't. By foot, or it's supposed to be by foot. Yes, all I did was take the non-resident, it was very simple, of a non-resident 20-foot slip is 1,400, then a, non, then a resident 20-foot was 700, half of it. If a six-month rental was 1,440, I left the six-month rental, I, I left it at 700, I didn't up it. If it was 1,728 for a 24-foot, half of that was 864. All I said was, whatever we're gonna charge non-residents, the resident's gonna pay half of what a non-resident would pay, instead of 25% of what a non-resident would pay, or whatever it is. And the 30 was just the same proportion? Yes. Increase? Or do we have a 30-foot rate for a non-resident? We don't have any 30-foot um, spaces right now that are rented by a non-resident. But that's not a question. Do we have a rate for it? If no. If it became available? Well, we must. I just don't have any right now, so I didn't put it on it. And, and I mean, I can still see people coming in here and being angry as all well, hell about it. I, yeah, you too. You know, I don't know how you can not raise it. Because um, I, I talk to people at, at uh, the park over here. Theirs is at 360. And when they went and did the dredging, they told everybody to take their boats out and find other places. And what they were finding out, the other boat runners were finding out they were being charged anywhere from 10 to $20 a foot for boat slips. You know, per month, not per year. Um, and no, it's not a cash cow. You know, I understand that aspect of it. I know it's not a luxury. If you own it, it's, you know, but people who don't own it are also looking at it and saying, I can't use it. It's not available to me as a resident to use the marina because I don't have a boat. And even if I had a boat, I couldn't get my boat in there because it's full. So, I mean, yes, it's an amenity, but if you don't own a boat and you're one of the 1,000 some other unit owners in here, you're looking at that and you're saying, boy, that's a sweet deal. Well, I understand what you're saying, but they still get the use of the marina by sitting there watching the, the marina, the boats, blah, blah. So they are getting a benefit from that marina. Uh, okay. I disagree with that, but. Uh, even though they don't have a boat, they're well, still getting the enjoyment of that marina. A comment somebody made, which I think is a valid comment, the fact that we have a marina makes all of the property in you here yes. that more, does value, it. more yeah. valuable. <laughs> At the same time, it's probably the most expensive facility to maintain over a longer period of time. Because when it does need things, they're it's not cheap. Ticket. They're big ticket items. Every four or five years, you're going to have to do these and things that are going to be yeah. big ticket items. It's, that's just we did dredging not too long ago. Yeah. Seawalls yeah. coming up, and that's a half a million dollar plus. I, I do think yeah. there's some benefits to reordering or, or the how we display the accounts when I'm doing this, so that we have a way of knowing exactly what the marina is costing us, what's coming in, what's going out. Um, we should always very, know very valuable. Uh, that we should know the storage lot when we're when we're charging those storage lot fees. Is it covering the lease that we pay the county? Oh yeah. I mean, oh I'm sure it is. Yeah, but I mean, right, yeah. I, I, my gut tells me it is. I, I believe it is, but I don't have any document that tells me always it's gonna because we put a lot of money into that with shop hawker and fencing and you know. So have we broken even with all of those investments yet? Are we starting to turn a profit with that? I. I think we have. Using the wrong profit's not the, the right word to, to use. Can we use the funds for other activities in the park that will offset the increase in assessment? Yes. Is the more appropriate. This is not a business, it's a governmental function. We're not in business to make a profit, but we are in business to maintain the amount of park and recreational activities here that people expect. I apologize, Mike, you're absolutely right, because what I was working on before this meeting, and I ran out of time, was taking every single one of these accounts and putting it into two buckets. One is maintaining the park, and the other is recreational. So if it's related to the pool, if it's related to shuffleboard, anything, it's in one bucket. If it's salaries, street lights, um, telephone bill, insurance you know that's just 
that's there. I was putting that in another bucket and saying once we come in with the assessments, we have to pay those bills just to keep the park running. What's left over for recreational activities? And is it enough to cover all the amenities that we have here in the park? Well, and we need to be careful about identifying expenses because of those things. The, the cost of staff mm -hmm. has Part of it is driven by each one of these facilities that mm -hmm. they work on. It's right. partly maintenance, and it's the other part is the setup mm -hmm. and that. If we get into that, you got to get into trying to. I know it's going to be almost impossible to really do a division, yeah. but I'm just curious. Right. But once we show that we took in more than the direct expenses were, people are going to say we charge too much. But then you guys not you, accurate. You, but you got to have a reserve and for some of these yeah. activities coming on over. I mean, you look. I don't know if you've been walking past the shuffleboard courts lately, but I don't. I don't think there's a day goes by that it isn't almost empty, almost. Mm -hmm. And yet it takes up the biggest amount of square footage for activities here in the park, other than the pool. <coughs> you know, and I could see better use of some of that for pickleball courts. Taking half of it and saying one half is pickleball, the other side is shuffleboard, and you know. But I'm sure once we, well, I'm sure they'll have people from show for you next month hollering and screaming at you saying, how dare you take that prized possession of the park and turn it into a pickleball court. That's what John Paul did. I used the part of their shuffleboard. We have, we have a bigger shuffleboard court well, than we have any six, park around We have six, was it 16 <coughs> spots? 32, 32, 32 blocks. There's 32, I think there's yeah, 16 yeah. on each side. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of real estate that's being used for an activity that no longer seems to have the excitement or use that it once had here in the park. And I think, you know, if you don't want to convert something over there, that's another possibility of saying, Definitely. I think we all agree on that. But you can definitely fill a room. Oh, yeah. I'm sure I'm going to fill a room. You know, they're all here. You know, the Marina people are going to be here and the Fellmore people are going to be here. They're going to raise all hell of them. All right. Yeah. I need have one more question. Sure. As the board, we have the right to purchase lease level up the, uh, from the charter. Um, why can't we take, if we have a waiting list for the storage, the waiting list for the boats, and so on. Why can't we take a portion of the Tim property and move trailers up here and start renting that out right now instead yeah. of going through the whole hassle of okay. the additional surveys? There's, there's an investment up front. We're going to have to fence it in. We're going to have to mark it off. We're going to have to, Wait. you know, just but. There's an initial upfront expense, but then it's income generated. Income from after that two point. years, we would yeah. pay for it yeah. within two years. Yes. Then we wouldn't be looking at thirteen hundred a month. I'm sorry, a year for the assessments and these other increases. Why don't we start using the property as a board instead of okay. horsing mm -hmm. around? I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Why? Why are you sorry? You, we have absolutely the right to do that. We own that land. Right now, right next to Rice's, they are putting in a slug of storage. Mm -hmm. It's $113 a month just for a 10 by 10. There's numerous homes in here that could use that storage. We could charge half, three quarters, whatever, and be making our expenses of what it's costing us to run this park. I, I just, I'm so I, I don't see the benefit of, right, of trying to. How much is the 10 by 10 storage a month? 113 50 a, and That's a building, a, right? You have a 10 by 10 opening, and you have to buy the lock. And you don't get your money back for the lock. <laughs> so I, 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 I just see us wasting a whole lot of property up there that we could really benefit the park on keeping the assessments down. Um, I, got, other I got a question for you. You're talking about putting up actual concrete buildings. Yeah. Well, concrete and electric is what you would need there. For the storage. And humidity control. Nope, you don't, no, need you don't that. have to do that. You don't have to do that. Nope. Uh, that would be an additional. We can bring that for. You could, but it's not necessary. <clears throat> I mean, um, I see no reason why it can't be done if that's where the board wishes to go. I mean, I think that's a conversation we need to have after tonight. <laughs> yes, yeah. Uh, 
<laughs> because I, I'm kind of on front street for that. Uh, but I see that as, as a valuable way, because you could actually line it around everything, and have that be a border for things. It's a discussion I'm willing to have. And I think if we're going to put storage out there, it should be long-term storage. So people yes. that are looking at leaving it there for an extended period of time, just because of traffic coming in in and out of the neighborhood, you know, well, if you rent a lot, that you rent it for a year, um, yes. then that's just I, consider the neighbors. Huh? Right. I need to back up to the marina for just a second because I scribbled down something stupid. Half of the proposed percent. What's half of the proposed? Percent? Half the proposed increase. So I went half from. Of What's half of the proposed increase is that it's going to vary. It's going to vary. It's oh. going to vary. It's going to vary depending on the. <laughs> okay, that's why I left it. Okay, sorry. All right, go back to the buildings and it's going. It's still going to. If you put storage back there, and I'm not saying this is a bad thing, you're going to increase the traffic through the period. Um, like there's no way around it. I think you're going to increase it at the end of the season when a lot of people, the, a lot of a lot of the um, people that live here seasonally that are renting, put their stuff in storage the, and they pay money to have it in storage until they come back for the next season. Now you have a third group in here complaining or expressing their opinion that okay, you had the marina, now you got the storage. Okay, you're going to have traffic increase. Uh, I can see people along Texas and Tennessee. Tennessee complaining because uh, it's going to increase traffic patterns and, uh, <coughs> at least twice a year. <laughs> well, and not, not so much Tennessee. Well, depending on how you came through, you could be passing Tennessee, but I don't think I would put... I don't think there was any grass in Tennessee. No, there isn't. No, there isn't. There isn't. Gotcha. I but see. what yeah. it would be is opening and closing the sheds, <laughs> making noise. I mean, but if you butter them right up to what is it, quick spark? Yeah, keep yeah, it could keep spark. Yeah. If you back it right up there, you wouldn't yeah. be hearing all that. And I don't. You could probably get thirty of those. So that's the thing. Yeah, it would help get rid of the vagrants to a large degree, yeah. and it would be helpful. Um, I mean, since it's your idea, start working on it. Can I just draw it? <laughs> <laughs> Not that idea. There's no PP involved, so you're on your own, dude. Yeah. Anything else we got to discuss? So I'll run through a, a new budget scenario with everything we discussed today. I'll get it to you as soon as possible so you have time to look at it before the next board meeting. <coughs> we have um, one more shot at it because the second board meeting in March is when we're going to be doing the public hearing and then voting to ratify it. So we still have another opportunity to make some adjustments um, after the next meeting, and then I'll bring back another version if needed. And we can talk, we can now. Uh, I think I've got it set up so that there's the public hearing, then there's the workshop, so that if we do have to make any more changes because of what was happened in the public, uh, hearing. public hearing, we can do so before we ratify it. I'll just do it quickly and then we'll know what the numbers are. Are you open my computer, huh? So if I understand this, by that time I need to go out and find out how much it's going to cost mm, to put no, uh, the story. No, 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 no. No, that's, that's not going to be range. this budget. Okay. It's, it's not going to be for this budget cycle, but it's something for us to, to, <laughs> to determine if we're going to move forward on so that in the future we don't have we have to opportunity. Um, anything else for the good and order? Do you have any idea when the audit will be done? I need to follow up with them and find out what's going on. They should be done pretty soon. I can't imagine. I, what happens is they go out to everybody <laughs> and do their initial site work and then they go back and finalize. Yeah. So it's where I, where am I on their list of when they bring it back up and revisit it. Um, so I'll follow up with them and find out where we are on the list. And if I still understood we're just jumping to 1150 well, this year. Or I don't know. When you run all the new numbers, 12. we may not, we may not need it. I don't know. Let me run all the scenarios through that we just talked about today and see what the minimum is. And I'll get it right up to you as soon as I can. Any public comment? <laughs> Wake up. On anything we discussed in yes. the workshop.
Mike Neal, 6619 California. I know who owns that piece of ground over on Tennessee. He's getting ready to put a home on it. You were too late. <laughs> <laughs> also, when you start talking about putting garages next to houses, it's, they have to, a lot, two lots have to be made a parcel. Mm -hmm. And that's the only way you can put a garage up. Uh, so that's where you're losing out, but that's what the county has done to keep people from taking, oh, it's a garage. Oh, I'm sorry, I got a bedroom in. Oh, yes, I did put a bathroom in there, too. Now we got a stick built house. Now, when you start trying to figure out lots, and what is a lot? It's a lot and a half. What about the guy that bought the four foot from his neighbor? Mm -hmm. There's only one way he's going to be able to do it. And that's by the foot. Mm -hmm. And I know you could, I'm not, I'm not being smart, but probably most people don't even think about that. That there are people that have bought a 60 foot lot or a 40 foot lot and want just a little more room. And old Johnny said, Hey, I got two lots. I go ahead. We'll need that. I have other four foot or eight foot over there to you. And it's surprising how many of those are in there. Mm -hmm. So this, I thought I'd just throw another clinker in your in your spoke <laughs> right. just, well, just to give you something to think about. Okay. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Any other public comment? No. Uh oh. <laughs> All of a sudden, they start showing up here. <laughs> <laughs> Sharon Price, 2204 New York Avenue. My uh, comment is just about the budget. The other day down at the post office, I dropped $70 on different things, different events down there. If people are willing to pay for all, outra not outrageous, but money for all of these things that are offered, I, you pay to play. And I don't see why in the world they would complain about an increase in our uh, assessment. Thank you. Any other public comment? We stand in recess till 6 o'clock tonight in the large hall. We're all expected to be there. <laughs> 40, five, five times a night. 40, 40 minutes to the hour. 240. Oh, I know. I know. I know. I know.